The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, 90 days of boxing, day number 72. I can't believe it. It's getting closer and closer. We're in the final stretch. It's been like a crazy, interesting, fun journey, highs and lows, but um, thankful for these like last 72 days, and I'm happy to be here. Um, first and foremost, before we get into any boxing talk or any just discussion in general, it, it must go with saying, you know, because as the good book says, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is king. Ha Happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter to all the fine folks out there in the world, man. It's a, it's a great holiday. It's a beautiful holiday. It's, 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 it's the holiday where like, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what people think, you know, Jesus gets his glory regardless. So I, I, I love Easter. It's, it's, a, it's a great reminder of what's truly important in life and, and to not get so caught up with all the things going on in the world. So um, yeah, man, happy Easter to everybody out there in the world. Hopefully you guys watching the, the video, watching the live, had a, had a lovely Easter with your family and your loved ones. But um, also again, before I get into any boxing talk, let me also tip my cap and let me show Pops um, massive appreciation and make sure you guys show Pops massive appreciation for Holding down, the, holding down the live stream for me when I was in Phoenix and also here in Vegas. Um, without Pops, um, there this this wouldn't go as smoothly as it's gone. So he, he deserves a lot of credit in all this. So um, yeah, man. Just here, I'm gonna be here for an hour. So you know, get your questions in, get your comments, get your thoughts, get everything in order. Cause um, I want to talk. You know, as far as look, I'm, I'm gonna say it like this, guys. Tomorrow, um, cause you guys know the drill. You guys know the drill. I'm not. I'm not doing anything in this live that I haven't did for other major fights. Tomorrow will be the official Tim Zhu versus Bastion Fundura aftermath live. So if you come in here talking about Tim Zhu, Fundura, Roly, Pipple, Cruz, any of that stuff on that car from last night, if you come in here talking about any of that, I'm not gonna really get too deep into it because again, you guys know the drill. Aftermath lives are always 48 hours after the after the major fight. So tomorrow we'll get into all that. Um, but look, anything else? Anything else y'all want to talk about, feel free to run it by me and, and we'll, we'll go ahead and um, talk about it. I know Gilberto Zoro Ramirez, you know, I haven't had a chance to watch the fight yet. I'm probably going to watch it tonight before I go to sleep and do a video about it. Um, you know, Zoro, Zoro is now the WBA Cruiserweight Champion. So congrats to Gilberto Zoro Ramirez, a fighter that has been overlooked for a long, long time. A guy that doesn't really get the, 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 the fanfare that other Mexican fighters get, but... He's made a lot of history in Mexican boxing. You know, first Mexican to win the super middleweight title, and now the first Mexican to win the cruiserweight title. And also, believe it or not, um, the heaviest, you know, native Mexican champion in the history of boxing. Andy Ruiz, I know he's um, Mexican-American, so maybe he doesn't fall under being a native Mexican. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if, if people want to count Andy Ruiz or not, but... um. If we're talking about from the actual country, like they were born there, um, that's Gilberto Zoro Ramirez. So congrats to him. I, I haven't watched the fight yet, but I just know he won. And uh, it's, a, it's a good win for him because a lot of people were saying, I, I remember being on these lives. I remember um, just hearing a lot of things about how Arsene Goulamarian was going to win. And Arsene Goulamarian did not win. So, um, you know, again, shout out to him. But shout out to Jesus Sam. He says, uh, saludos. Saludos to you, Jesus. Good to see you as always. Um, Chris... Mannix and Sinisa, I never saw that as. Listen, man, I'm not gonna comment on nothing. That's that's that that's that's her personal business. That's not for me to really uh, talk about or discuss. But uh, God bless. Um, I know this is overshadowed, but Elijah the Wolf suffered a big scare against the phony cat he was fighting, or the Pinoy cat he was fighting. Yeah, I gotta watch that too. I was I was out in Arizona. I I seen the highlights. I saw I saw him get clipped. And I saw him doing the Macarena, and I saw him having a hard time with uh, Villanueva. So it's unfortunate because uh, a lot of people are, are going to look at that, and a lot of people are going to look at Elijah Pierce's food. So maybe he gets the fights. Who knows? I, I hope that could lead towards maybe him getting some of the, the big fights at 122 and uh, progressing his career. But yeah. Nah, Brennan. Nah, man. How do you... Uh... We're not doing that, champ. You can't just come here, Brennan. Brennan, you can't just come here, flap your gums on Easter and dis and disrespect the the, the, the man above. We're not, we're not doing that, champ. It's Easter. Um, BT, why was Raymond Murataya not not eager to fight on Friday? 
I don't know, man. I was there. It was, it was, it was a. I wanted to see a little more from Raymond. I was hoping that Raymond Muratia would have shown me some more gears. Um, he he boxed. I thought he boxed well. I thought for the most part. I mean, his defense was leaky. Zolani and Dengeni was doing a good job finding a home for that right hand, but he did not show those gears that we wanted to see. And basically, go on. All right, Brennan. You're my guy, Brennan. I like you. One more comment. Getting booted, champ. Don't, 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 don't play with me, champ. It's Easter Sunday. Don't do it. Don't, Brennan. I like you, man. You've been in these lives for a long time. Don't do it, champ. I, that's two strikes, Brennan. You do it again. I'm booting you out. But um, what was I saying before Brennan distracted me? I was talking about um, Murataya. Ram Murataya. He, he. I wanted to see some more gears from him. He. He was a guy that you know th the talk throughout the week. You know, I, I had talked to his esteemed trainer Robert Garcia throughout the week and. There were talks about fighters ducking him and avoiding him and this, that, and the third. And, you know, I was looking for like a statement of performance so that, you know, the Shakurs and the, and the other guys in the division could look at him and say, you know what, this member of Thai kid, he's serious. And I'm not saying he's not serious. He's still a, a, a very young, upcoming contender and whatnot. I, I like him, but um, performance left some, some, some things to be desired. And, and I was, uh, you know, I feel like I give, I give the African, I give Endon Yeni credit for being tough. And crafty and knowing when to punch and knowing how to win some moments of the rounds. Um, but yeah, like just just you know, not not every performance is gonna be a great performance. Like you're not gonna you're not gonna be um having star making performances of the highest order every single fight. But you know, he just left some things to be desired in a in a fight, in a moment of his career where I feel like a, a statement performance would have really done him great wonders because I think there were little, there were more eyeballs Raymond Muratia than usual. He was fighting higher up on a card, on, on, a, on a notable card, on a big card, and he just like not 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 to say that he boxed bad. It just it just wasn't you know sensational. You know and it is what it is. It's boxing. Not every performance is sensational. We move on. Um, shout out to my boy John and my, my boy uh, Engadi TV from upstate New York. Good to see you, champ. Hope all is well. He says Happy Easter, champ. Did you notice how well they moved along the pay per view last night? Not much fill it, and the main event was over at eleven a eleven. PM East Coast time. Yeah, man. I'm gonna say it like this, man. Um, like I said, tomorrow's live is gonna be more so about PBC because I always like to give it 48 hours to marinate on the on the big fights before I go live and just talk about it. Because sometimes you need to with feelings and emotions and things and other developments happening in regards to these things. But as far as the presentation, I, I gotta give PBC a lot of credit, man. They did a, they did an amazing job pacing the pacing this card. I've been to so many cards. I've, I've been live on YouTube for so many cards, especially those Saudi cards where they take forever to get to the next fight. And it just felt like everything last night moved along very smoothly. I think the main event was over in Las Vegas by like, yeah, like you said 11 uh, Eastern. So yeah, damn near 8, 8 p.m. You know, 8, 8 p.m., 8 something p.m. We was out of there. And um, shout out to them, man. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get credit where credit is due. You know, I'm no, I'm no fanboy of any promotional company. I may troll, but honestly, really, I... Nothing. None of these guys put guy money in my pocket, so I just I, I want to see the best fights. So good, good on PBC for putting on a great event, start to finish. It was great. I mean, for all from the from the Carmel Moen fight all the way on up, it was just a fun night of boxing. He says, "Blessings to everyone and Easter." And, and by the way, shout out to my boy Philippians four thirteen for the for his, for his continued contributions and just everything he's done uh, for the channel over the years. God bless you, man. He says. Uh, blessings to everyone on Easter. And Pop said you might come up for the Kentucky Derby. If so, I'll pay for your room and food. Just let me know. When when is when is the Kentucky Derby? I, I I've never been to the Kentucky Derby. I I don't really know a whole lot about horse racing. I know down by where I live in South Florida, we got we got the Gulf Stream racetrack and casino. But like, I know the the, the Kentucky Derby. I believe is always in the summer. So just give me a date, and I'll see what my schedule is looking like, man. Because it's, it's it's crazy crazy times in my life, man. It's, Crazy, crazy, crazy times of my life, you know. Um, sometimes I do miss those days where, like, I had 10,000 subscribers or less and I just had more free time. But, like, I'm a very busy man these days and I try to, like, please as many people as possible. But I'm only one man, you know. So just let me know. Give, give me a date. Give me a date. I thought the valdez Wilson fight was entertaining and congratulations to Zorro. Yeah, Oscar Valdez did his thing. Oscar Valdez... Um, you know, all the I mean, you know, all those talks about maybe him 
losing a step or having too much taken out of him. You know, he, he went out there. I thought he put on one of the better performances of his career, so credit to him. Uh, Liam Wilson had his moments, but I just think Oscar Valdez's veteran experience and um, his hunger, he, his desire, um, it just it was the difference in the fight. So shout out to him. You know, big, big, big things in store for him. He says, first weekend of May. Like, May what? Like, because I know Canelo... Canelo Munguia is May 4th. So can you give me an, can you give me an exact day? Canelo Munguia is May 4th. So I'm the, I'm pretty sure that's the first, the first weekend of May. So I don't know, man. I might be here for that. I might be here in Vegas for that. So if you can let me know the exact day, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um you you got me on Twitter, so just message me there. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll get with you there on Twitter. But um Tank Williams, shout out to him. He says, Tank said earlier in the live, he said that he has been busy and he's been missing the streams. But listen, it's all good, champ. You know, life, there's more life than boxing and and and, and God bless you for taking handling your business. Thank you for showing up. He also said, Tank, he said, PBC hit it out the park last night. Big win for boxing on Amazon. Yeah, obviously. I'll tell you one thing that I noticed and I, maybe I should save it for tomorrow. But um, and I, you know, I'll save it for tomorrow. There, there is something that was happening at the arena that was different from a presentation standpoint, but I'll, I'll say it for tomorrow's live. Cause like I said, um, I got to marinate on some more things and I got to see, you know, I, I always leave it 48 hours at the major fights before I do my aftermath live. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue the policy here. Um, BT, did you watch Fabio Worley versus Frazier Clark? No, I didn't. I spent the whole entire day today resting and recovering. And you may say, BT, what are you resting and recovering from? Well, Friday morning, I woke up. I was in Arizona. I was in Phoenix, and um, you know, I, I went. I wound up going to the Oscar Valdez fight, so I went to that fight. Then I'm gonna tell you guys this, and, and, and y'all, my you know, people, you guys that watch these 90 Days of Boxing lives, you know, it's not just about boxing. We talk about all kinds of stuff. So I'll, I'll be honest with you. After I did my Sinisa Estrada post fight review, um, right there at the Westgate. I went somewhere I don't I I went somewhere that I don't oftentimes go in life. I went I went to the club, man. And I shouldn't have been in the club, but I was in the club, man. And I drank. I drank I drank more than I ever have in my entire life. And um so yeah, that happened. And then I stayed awake the whole entire night, all the all, all the way through the whole entire night. I went on a plane. I got on the plane from Phoenix to from uh, Phoenix to Vegas. Then as soon as I got to Vegas, I went right to the T-Mobile Arena, so I, di I didn't sleep for like two days. So I spent the whole day just recovering. Um, so I, I didn't see it, but I heard, I heard Fabio Worley versus Frazier Clark was a great fight. I heard, uh, I saw that what's his name, Vidal Riley, that uh, that hype job. I saw that he fought. He was fighting um, Mikhail Lawal, the former British champion, and he won. And I saw Isaac Chamberlain, him going back and forth. So, uh, you know, if, if they want to make that happen, great, you know. Um, at least now, Vidal Riley has at least become, uh, a, he's done, he's beating somebody that's a common opponent with Isaac. So now that fight makes more sense. So now, now if they want to fight, you go ahead and you do it because you fought one of the guys I was saying he should fight and he beat him. So now that you did that, if Ben Shalom and, and Boxer and the fine folks in the UK, if they want to make Isaac Chamberlain versus Vidal Riley, then go ahead and make it. Isaac Chamberlain has fought every single British, uh, top British fighter of his area cruiserweight is nothing from the fight, Vidal Riley. So um, personally, though, just just speaking to put my to put my manager my manager's hat on for a second. Personally, I don't think Isaac should fight Vidal Riley next because even if he's done a little bit more and since uh, I last spoke about this, and even if he has become champion, I just think Isaac has paid his dues. He's he's fought all the top guys um, around the British cruiserweight scene. I feel like he should be the, afforded a proper opportunity to push up in levels, to push up, and try to become champion. And I felt like he should be fighting Michael Cheslack for the European title. That's what I feel he should do. That's the next step. But again, I, I'm not his manager. I'm just, I, I, I like to think, I, I, I always have my, um, I think that's how I think. When I think about fighters and what's next, I put myself in a managerial like standpoint. Um, and I feel like that from a managerial standpoint is, is the right move, is the Michael Cheslack European title fight. But that's just my opinion. So we'll see how it goes. Money talks and bullshit walks. So if Boxar and Sky Sports come right with the money, um, domestically in the UK, Isaac Chamberlain versus Vi v v Vidal Riley is a big fight over there. So, you know, and who knows? I would love to go to that fight just because, you know, Isaac's my guy and I've, I haven't seen him in some years and I've been wanting to go to the UK for a fight. So that'd be a fun one to go to. Um...
David Escher says, I'm looking forward to watching Angelo Leo fight Eduardo Baez. Me too, champ. Me too. Honestly, I'm just really like, I'm trying to really take it one day at a time and appreciate every day as it comes. But honestly, I'm, I'm anxious for that fight. Like I'm very excited for that fight because um, I know how hard Angelo works and I know that that's the kind of fighter in Baez. Baez is a, Baez is a tough fighter who always comes to fight. And um, it's another chance for Angelo to continue to show, you know, who he is in the featherweight division. And um, I'm excited about it. And as you guys saw, if you guys haven't checked it out, I would, I would highly advise you to go check out my interview that I did with um, Ferco Hernandez, uh, Venado Lopez's manager. He, he, he actually said it himself that a fight they're looking at um, is Angelo Leo versus Venado for the IBF title. So, you know, obviously you don't want to overlook anybody. You know, Baez is a tough fighter. He's no slouch, but um, assuming that he takes care of business, you know, that's that that's gonna be on the table. And what a great fight that'll be for boxing. You know, Venado Lopez is a gunslinger, very athletic, throws a lot of punches. Um, definitely someone fun to watch. Breaks a lot of rules, but he's fun to watch. Taking on a former champion like Angel Leo, who's really revived his career in a, in a great way. To you know, Mexican versus Mexican American. It's a it's a TV friendly fight. What, what 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 more do you want? What more could you ask for? So I'm with you, David. I'm I'm, I'm with you on that one. Michael Cheslock has an early KO win over that dude who was lightly 30 seconds away from going the distance with the better BF. It's crazy. You're talking about uh what was that guy's name? It's not Adam Denny's. No, is it is it Adam Denny's? Or was it early in his career? Who who was that guy? I know who you're talking about, but I can't remember the name right now. Law versus Elijah Garcia on the tank card. Yeah, shout out to Arizani Laura, man. Uh, Laura continues to show that if you're not truly an elite world-class fighter, you will get found out and found out quickly. So these guys like Thomas Lamana, these guys like Michael Zarafa, when when it came when it came time when it came when push came to shove, you know that these guys couldn't handle um, the type of punishment that Laura could dish out. Laura, he's a fighter that as his legs have slowed down and uh, as he's aged, he has... Hold on, hold on. See? He, hold on, guys. See, you guys get me to do it. I'm trying not to talk about that PBC card. I'm saving it for tomorrow. I'm saving it for tomorrow. I'll, I'll just say this. I'll just say this. Laura, Laura has evolved in a great way since uh, he's gotten older. I actually enjoy watching him fight in the pocket. I just would like to see him fight a little more often and fight some more top guys. But um, good, 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 good win for him. Zarafa is just not on that level, unfortunately. And I, and I like Zarafa. I met him at the convention. He's a good guy, but he's just not on that level, you know? And it is what it is. There's levels in boxing, you know. Hopefully, he comes back stronger and don't let this discourage him and keeps pushing forward. Because middleweight division is thin enough to where if Michael Zafra strings together a couple wins, he could be right back there for a title shot. Because that's how bad and that's how thin the middleweight division truly is at this moment in time. You hear me? So, Eric Colling, yeah, I remember him. That was a fight, and Enrico Colling. I thought Venado was going to go after Oscar Valdez. He still might. I, I, it all depends. I, I, like, like His manager in our interview, if you've watched it, you know, I'm sure you did, uh, he said a lot of things. You know, He said they'd love to uh, fight Angelo. Um, I think there's reason to believe that, that, that he's not bullshitting me. They do want to fight Angelo. But obviously, Oscar Valdez is a big name in boxing, and... Um, if their opportunity presents, presents itself, they may try to go do that. We'll, we'll see what happens. I think I'm not going to really go too hard on anybody until we see what happens in about two weeks' time with Angelo's fight. Um, we'll see how it looks, and then we'll, we'll revisit what, what he said after. So, I think Oshaki Foster beats Oscar Valdez comfortably, and shout-out to MEZBX. That's a good fight, man. I like that fight. Um, yeah, Oshaki Foster, he's one of those guys that has great, like, really good – natural fighting instincts. He, he he knows when to hold him. He knows when to fold him. He knows he just understands distance very well. He understands when he's got to bang it out in the pocket. Um, I like that fight a lot, and I hope that's a fight they make. Um, Oscar Valdez, he, he he beat a guy on Liam Wilson who's a solid fighter. Um, but, like, but like you said, I think I think Oshaki's a, is a higher class fighter than Liam Wilson. He's, he's champion. He's a proven champion. He's one of boxing's truest champions. And I think... Um, Stylistically speaking, that's probably one of the best fights you can make at 130. And I also think it's a fight that Bob Arum and Top Rank would never, uh, would definitely go ahead and make because Bob Arum loves Oscar Valdez. BT Fundora is the pound for pound king. 
<laughs> I'll tell you this, it, you know, again, and you guys, you guys are trying, I'm not going to do it. I'm saving it for tomorrow. Credit to him. He won the fight. Um, hopefully good things happen from next year. Um, I honestly think Valdez gives shock trouble after rewatching that Rocky Hernandez fight. Um, listen, styles make fights. You never know what's going to happen from, from one fight to the next. That's why we watch the fights. That's why boxing is the theater of the unexpected. Um, Oscar Valdez, well, I'll say this about him. Oscar Valdez has a so he has a certain level of of toughness. Um, he has a certain level of grit to him. He doesn't get discouraged. You know, he's very he's a he's a stubborn, stubborn minded fighter in a good way. And so, uh, for that reason, I'll never write him off. You know, BT Pro Box still has Angelo scheduled um, April tenth magazine. April 10th, Ray Magazine posts wrong dates, no worries. No, no, he's, he's fine that day. I, I know that for a fact. He's definitely fighting on April 10th. <laughs> he's definitely fighting on April 10th. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's fighting on that day. Um, I hope it did good pay-per-view numbers. It was a really entertaining card last night, top to bottom. I'm thinking, I hope it did well too, man. And I, I got it, I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. It was, it, was, it was a fun card to be at. To be honest, and again, I don't want to talk too much about it, but one of the fights that I enjoyed the most was, I really enjoyed Kermel Moen. You know, I'm a big fan of Kermel Moen because I watched him fight in the amateurs and I've seen him spar here in Vegas. And I've seen, I've seen him spar Angelo. I mean, I've seen a lot of important moments of that kid's uh, young career. So um, I'm very intrigued to see his growth. And it was cool to see him fight a, a, a real competent professional fighter in Anthony Kuba, a guy that's 8-0, and a guy that knows how to fight, you know? And it wasn't a pushover. He gave him some real rounds. So... Um, I think he's gonna really be something. You see, shout out to, by the way, shout out to everybody here. Make sure you guys listen. I got I got 22. Listen, man, y'all, y'all gotta show some appreciation. I got 22 people here, and I only see like 12 likes, man. Don't be stingy, guys. Smash that like button. We we 72 days in. You know, let, let YouTube know that you guys are really and truthfully messing with the untouchable. True School Sports Empire and these 90 Days Alive. So it gets pushed out to more viewers that don't follow me yet and that haven't watched me yet. Because, guys, there's a lot of boxing fans that um, haven't really discovered me yet. And it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the audience I do have. But those likes play a role in people finding True School Sports. So you're not just helping me. You're not just helping the channel. But you're helping other boxing fans, which it does in turn is helping boxing now. So please go do that. And I'm not begging. But I'm just telling you why hitting the like button is important. Um... Christopher says, how long have you been live? Is it ending soon? No, I've, I've been live for 23 minutes. Um, I'm planning on going live for about an hour. So we'll see how I feel during, after that, around the hour mark. And maybe, maybe, maybe it'll be longer. It all depends on what kind of responses we get. Um, I wonder who Jesus Ramos will fight next. I thought he was a really dangerous fighter after the Spencer fight, but that Lubin loss really disappointed me. I don't think he lost to Lubin. I think they robbed him. I think, you know, I thought, I thought he beat Eric Lubin pretty clearly. But uh, obviously, you know, boxing can be a subjective sport. It is a subjective sport. And the judges missed a great fight, unfortunately. Um, I still view Jesus Ramos as one of the top contenders in the 154 division. And um, that, 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 that uh, blemish hasn't um, affected what I think about him. He's got some very good wins on that resume of his. Um, Fondora, BT, what are your thoughts on the WBO going to order Crawford versus Fondora? Um, I'll speak more about it tomorrow on the Aftermath Live, but um, what I'll say about it just briefly is that um, hopefully, whether they order it or don't order it, which I know they are going to order it, it's not really on the WBO. It's really on Samson and Fundoa and their team and what they want to do. And so there's ways that they can get around that. They don't want to fight him. So we'll speak more about it tomorrow, but that's that's all I'll say. That's, that's, that's all I'll say about uh, that. You know, Tomorrow, I'll have more energy, and I'll be more like rested. Because like I said, the last two days before today were just like, I didn't sleep at all for two days. <laughs> you know, I was up to a lot of stuff that was good and productive and not so good and productive. So um, you know, I just want just wanna, wanna to be in the best frame of mind. And I, you know, I, always give, I always give it 48 hours after every major fight just so I could really marinate and just see what the fighters say and what you know, what winds up happening with the sanctioning bodies, you know, so it's, it's just best. It's the best way to be when it comes to going live for these kind of fights. But yeah, guys, do me a favor as well. 
Let me know where you're watching from, what city, what state, what continent. You know, leave your leave leave your location down below. I want to see how international we are on the broadcast. You know, um, I'm in I'm in the fight capital of the world. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, man. We've been these 90 days of boxing series. We've been in South Florida. We've been in upstate New York. We've been in California. We've been here. We've been in Arizona. I mean, it's been crazy, man. God's really answered a lot of prayers. So that, that, that's why, like this Easter Sunday, I'm I'm so thankful because it's like, man, I prayed so many years. For a lot of for, for a lot of things that I'm able to do now, I prayed years for, and it's just happening. So it's like, I'm I'm the most grateful. I've always been grateful, but I'm even more grateful than than usual these days because it's like I, I've seen God answer so many prayers. You know, when I thought He wasn't even listening sometimes. So it's it's, it's great, you know. Um, Philadelphia in the building. Boots is the best. One forty seven pounds. Shout out to my man Wayne, Wayne Witherspoon. Got a lot of love for my guy and Wayne Witherspoon. Shout out to Philadelphia. Philadelphia stand up. And shout out to Boots. Zoro really improved his style these last two fights under Julian Chua. Him versus the winner of Breedis and Jayabataya is the biggest fight to make for the zone. And that's a really interesting fight for the cruiserweight division because Jayabataya, you know, a lot of these guys, especially unfortunately because of Ben Shalom, they don't want to fight Jayabataya. Um, or they, you know, they're being advised to not fight him and keep everything in house over there and not fight him. And that now with him being stripped of the title, um, they don't want they, 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 they got more reason to not fight him. So in the meantime, you know, Australia versus Mexico, Zoro versus Jaya Bataya, that, that, that sounds like a great fight, a great event, you know, um, two Southpaws. Zoro's kind of adapted his style a little bit. He's not the Zoro Ramirez from the 168 days that just comes forward and throws a bunch of volume punches. This, this, this Zoro Ramirez boxes. This Zoro Ramirez is on his toes. This Zoro Ramirez mixes it up. So I've always liked Zoro. Um, I think he's a good fighter. And I want to see him in that fight. Boots is calling out 140 pounders. And you know what? I ain't mad since those clowns 154 can't get their shit together. Listen, man, that's, 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 that's the position you get put in because he's at 47, right? So if he calls out any of the top guys at 47, 147 doesn't have any big names. So like if he called out Barrios or, you know, even like a Stanionis or even like the guys I want to see him fight, like Giovanni Santiano, Jin Suzaki, the majority of the boxing public that doesn't, you know, that's not hardcore boxing fans is going to say, who the hell are these guys? That doesn't do anything for Jerron Ennis, right? The big names are in the weight class above, and the big names are in the weight class below. Now, I didn't, I didn't see who he called out at 40, so you may have to put me on game. Who did he call out at 40? Did he call out Haney? Did he call out Teal? Did he call out Matias? Who's he calling out at 40? Why wasn't the media covering Zoro making history last night by becoming Mexico's first cruiserweight champion, much as the media covered the PBC fights? I'm going to do a video about that before I go to sleep tonight. I haven't watched the fight yet, so that's why I haven't covered it. So I'll, I'll just answer on behalf of myself in True School Sport. I, I had to really get some rest last night, and I still need to get some rest. Um, but Zoro, I don't know what it is. Zoro, Zoro's never really gotten that, that, that push that other Mexican fighters tend to get. Like, even when he was a top rank, I don't think he got that much push compared to, like, let's say, like, Isak Cruz or Canelo or Munguia. Um, and to this day, I just feel like he doesn't get that push. Um, I don't know if it's because maybe he doesn't have the biggest personality. I don't, I don't know what it is, man. He's a very good fighter. Is he a A++ fighter? No, I don't think he's an A++ fighter, but he's did some historical things. He's did some really big things for Mexican boxing. You know, like I said, first Mexican cruiserweight champion, first Mexican, you know, 68 pound champion. I mean, that's nothing to scoff at. That That's nothing to just stick your nose up at. That's, that's big time stuff. So uh, you, you got a point. They should be covering Zoro Ramirez more, but it's not anything differently now than it's been with his entire career. He's never really been the Mexican fighter that's gotten that push. And I feel like Zoro has had the unfortunate... Um, it's been unfortunate for him because, you know, he's a quiet guy. He don't really talk a lot. Um, when he was early in his career, when, when he was with top rank, he he wasn't in those big fights. Like he wasn't in the in the World Boxing Super Series against like Callum Smith and those kind of guys. Um, the one big fight he did get against Bilbo, he got absolutely schooled. And um, he's had the unfortunate set of circumstances where he's he literally, his ascension in boxing was happening at the same time as Canelo Alvarez. Then you've had other young guys like David Benavides, Mexican-American fighters. Well, he just, so he, he's just been, to, to use the word properly, he's been overshadowed by a lot of fighters. But it, it doesn't take away from the, his uh, accomplishments and what he's done in the sport. Zoro Ramirez is a quality fighter. 
Shout out to Philippians 4.13 again with another super chat. Shout out to uh, God bless him on this Easter Sunday. He says, have you noticed Crawford was complaining about Spence inactivity before they fought, but now Crawford becomes a champion. But now Crawford becomes a champion. He's doing the same damn thing. And, and you know what? I'm so glad you brought that up, uh, Philippians 4.13, because that's the same thing I've said. I just said it in my last video, and and, and, and this is what I, I want to make this clear. I want to dead I want to dead this in the water because people have this like preconceived notion that I hate Terrence Crawford or something like that, and it's hilarious to me because like literally Terrence Crawford is literally one of my favorite fighters in the history of boxing. I love Terrence Crawford. I've 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 for the first time I ever went to New York City in my entire freaking life was to go cover him versus Hank Lundy. Um, I deprived myself of sleep and I walked the streets of New York City not, not even knowing where I was at. I was a 21 year old kid. Um, and I interviewed Terrence Crawford on like no hours of sleep. Um, I ran from my, my old job at making pizza across the across Daniel Beach where I lived just to get home in time to watch him fight Dieri Jean. So don't sit here and talk come to come to me talking about some you 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 are you're being biased towards Terrence Crawford. If anything, I should be more prone to be biased for Terrence Crawford because I'm such a big fan of him as a fighter, but people don't understand that. But I'm an adult. I can compartmentalize things. Just because I like him and I'm a fan of him doesn't mean I gotta co-sign every and all bullshit he pulls in his career. Now I've been frustrated with him, and I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna answer this here. I want to I wanna talk about this here, because this really pissed me off, because today, when um, it was brought up about, you know, I was going off that Terrence Crawford did, hasn't really capitalized on any of his momentum since he fired Earl Spence, and people wanted to talk about, oh, um, oh, uh, uh, BT, don't, don't you realize that Terrence Crawford and Spence had a rematch clause? Yeah, yeah, dipshit, I did realize he had a rematch clause, but guess what? My issue isn't with the rematch clause. My issue is that in this time since he's beaten Earl Spence, in this time since he beat Earl Spence, he's called out Canelo. He's called out Tim Zhu. He's 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 mentioned fighting everybody under the sun. But then, and whenever it comes to Jerron Ennis, and I, I'm not just talking about now. I'm talking about even before he fought Spence. And the same thing goes for Spence with Ennis too. Both of them. Anytime Jerron Ennis ever got mentioned, they both been overly dismissive. Terrence Crawford has a big reputation in boxing for being one of the, the most competitive people there is. He's known for his competitive mindset, not just in the boxing ring, but also the, outside the boxing ring. But when Jerron Ennis' name gets mentioned, that same competitive guy, I don't see that guy when Ennis gets mentioned. Now, I know everybody's, I know all, all the Crawford fanboys are going to say they're going to mention BOK Prime, which I've done myself. They're going to criticize Boots' team for being idiots, which they have been. I'm, I'm with all that, but... My issue is just with the fact that Terrence Crawford, when asked about Jerron Ennis, doesn't have that same competitive fire for him like he does for everyone else. That's my issue. That's all it is. All that talk about the Spence rematch clause and this cataract surgery and this, that, and the third. Yeah, okay, I know those things. But could you at least say, could you, could, could you, could, could, could Terrence at least say, you know what? I would love to fight Boots. Could he at least say something like that? Could he at least say, you know, could Terrence Crawford at minimum just be like, look, um, that fight's not the biggest money-making fight, but I'll beat the brakes off of him? Could he, could he just flash some confidence? That's all I, could he flash some confidence that he could beat Jerron Ennis? That's all I want to, that's all I want to see. Cause he's not flashing none of that confidence. He's not flashing none of that, that, that fire that I always see him having for other fighters. That's my issue. Talk about BT's bias to, for, uh, against Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford's been my favorite fighter for the better part of a decade. When See, you guys don't even, you guys, some of you guys talking, you guys don't even know who you're talking to sometimes. Like, Terrence Crawford, before I even made YouTube videos, many years ago, I used to write articles. I used to have a blog. I used to write, used to write articles about boxing when I was like 19 years old, all right? I wrote an article like 10 years ago about Terrence Carr being the number one pound pound fighter in boxing 10 fucking years ago. I don't want to hear about you, 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 you think I'm hating on Terrence Carr because I don't agree with all the bullshit and course like everything he's doing in his career. All I wanted to see him do after winning his legacy fight was continue the momentum that he, that he earned in a great fight. And I know he had the rematch clause, but from my vantage point, I just didn't really see um, any urgency from him. And I feel like he's been resting on his laurels. Because he's had all this energy for Canelo. He had all this energy for guys like Tim Zhu. But uh, just not any energy for Jerron Ennis. And I, I don't think that's cool. And I don't like how the boxing fans and the boxing public have been so 
cool with Terrence, like letting letting Terrence Crawford just slide, like letting letting Terrence Crawford just slide with that. Like he don't got nothing to prove. He don't gotta do none of that stuff. And by the way, let me let me take some time to acknowledge him, man. Shout out to my guy. Felipe, man. Felipe, and you know what? Y'all gonna be fired up today. So Felipe, Felipe, thank you so much for all the support over the years. I'm gonna tell you guys like this. There's been so many people in my life, behind the scenes, friends, family, um, you know, rest in peace to my guy, Charlie, who died last year. One of my mentors. I wouldn't be here without him. I wouldn't be here without Pops. But one of the guys that I'm telling you guys I wouldn't be here without is that man that just super chatted $99, my guy Felipe. I learned a lot, of, I learned a lot from Felipe about life and how to be a professional. So shout out to him and, and thank you for all the support. And God willing, Felipe, hopefully we, we cross paths soon because it's been what? How long has it been now? It's been some time now. It's been maybe, I'm going to say it's been damn near... Solid two years now since I seen you, which is kind of crazy. So um, hopefully we we see each other soon, and I get over to Texas or we come for the fights here in Vegas or whatever. But um, hope all is well, and um, you know, shout out to you. You know, shout out to my guy Shinobi. Got got a lot of love for my guy Shinobi. He says I'm here to support the most underrated boxing channel, and and he, he he's telling the truth about that. You know, I, I I agree with Shinobi. I think I am the most underrated boxing channel. But um, listen, the people that 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 matter. Are the viewers and and it doesn't matter. Um, I don't compare myself to nobody because there's no comparison. God made me. God made me fearfully and wonderfully. So there's no comparison. Um. So thank you. What division would you like the World Boxing Super Series to be in? I would love a Super Flyweight tournament. If it okay, so the World Boxing Super Series. I don't think it's coming back because they weren't making enough money. Um. I remember the last time my last thing I heard was a couple years ago. Fighters had issues with payments and things like that. I think if I had it my way and they could bring it back, I would really love to see a World Boxing Super Series with the heavyweight division, honestly. The heavyweight division, um, the super flyweight division, and probably middleweight. Those, those three divisions. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why those three, those three divisions. We'll start, we'll start heavyweight, right? Heavyweight is a division that I would like to have a World Boxing Super Series because... Philip, my boy Philip Hargovich can't get a world title shot, and they're trying to circumvent him as a mandatory and not giving him a shot. So a tournament would give guys like him, not 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 just guys like Hargovich, but guys like Frank Sanchez, guys like Hergovich, the guys that really are high risk, low reward guys that can't get the shot. It would give them a chance to to fight on an even playing field in a tournament style, so nobody could duck nobody could duck anybody. The winners fight the winners, and the losers get bounced the hell out the damn tournament. I wish we had that for the top level of the heavyweight division. Um, I wish the Saudis would. The Saudis love heavyweight boxing. I wish the Saudis would put together a, a legitimate, like, real bracket style heavyweight tournament. That would be great for boxing. So that division, I would like. I would like the middleweight division to have a tournament, a tournament, a tournament because you know Johnny Beck is the unified champion. Middleweight's not a strong division, but there's some good contenders at middleweight that I feel um, should get a chance to to fight. Big time uh, fights like guys like Elijah Garcia, guys like Ian Green. These are fighters that I think are really are, are, are good contenders, but they're gonna be had to make the weight because of politics. So um, that division, and then yeah, probably like the super super flyweight because you got um you got Ioka, you got Scrappy Ramirez. Scrappy Ramirez can't get get the title shot against Ioka because Ioka filed for an exemption. So there's just a lot of pol there's, there's politics even at 115. So yeah, if I had it my way. Those are the three weight classes that um I would definitely go ahead and you know make tournaments for. Spence is getting used to a getting used to a new trend, moving up in weight, finding the top. Yeah, the I, again I want to save it for tomorrow because you know the, the, tomorrow is the beginning the beginning of the first quarter. Tomorrow is the beginning of a new month, and I want to come out with a bang tomorrow. So we'll, we'll go live about this tomorrow. But um I would love to see I would love to see uh. Who the hell his trainer is? <laughs> Does anybody know who his trainer is? Because I haven't heard anything. Like, yeah, uh, Hyro, I'm not talking about PPC on this live tomorrow. But as far as Laura, um, Laura continues to show me that if you're not truly an elite, world class fighter, you get found out. Um, you get really, really found out. And Michael Zarafa, he got his shot after a lot of politics kept him from getting a title shot. And when the lights came on, he didn't perform. So it is what it is. Shout out to Laura and Iroh. You, you, know, you know who Laura has to fight. Um, 
You know who Laura has to fight tomorrow? Laura, or not tomorrow. Uh, you know who Laura should fight next? He, gotta find my, he has to go see my boy Ian Green. True school sports. I know this is kind of off topic, but despite Hector Camacho Sr. making mistakes, but do you think his killers will be brought to justice in Puerto Rico? I mean, he didn't have to die tragic. I don't know a whole lot about that, but, you know, the good book says what's done in the dark will come to light. So whether it's now, whether it's later, stuff comes to light. Look look at what happened with um P. Diddy recently. You know, all the weird stuff that he's been doing. That got found out. So there you go. He said, damn, no PBC. Yeah, Hyrule. I mean, look, I don't know why people get mad. I, I've been, I, I do... I, all my aftermath lives go back and check. All my aftermath lives are always forty-eight hours after the major fight, and it's done that way intentionally so that I, can, I, I, so, I so that I can properly digest every and everything everything that happens. And there's always like things that happen with sanctioning bodies and fights getting made immediately and deals in place. So it's it's done that way for a reason. So tomorrow night we'll go live, and it'll just be just be dedicated to PBC. And um, yeah, man. I know, I know you enjoyed it a lot last night, Harold. It was, it was a great card. I enjoyed being there. They, they, they did a great job. It was a good win for boxing for PBC to put on such a great event on Amazon. And hopefully they can do it with more regularity and consistency. BT, what's been your favorite uh, event attended so far this year? Ford, Odebeck, or did Simzu or Fundura pass it? My favorite fight that I've attended so far this year was Angelo Leo versus Mike Planilla. That was the fight I enjoyed the most because Angelo Leo is a great friend of the, in my life and in, on, on the channel. He's a really good fighter, um, a top fighter. Uh, it was that, that that fight was real personal to me because you know, um, you know, they asked me to walk out with them. I I went ahead and I walked out with them, and I actually like I was even honored. They asked me to say the prayer before he went out there, and he wound up knocking out Plenia with a big one punch body shot. So that was a very special fight for me. But outside of that, aside from Angelo's fight, I would say Odebeck and Ford. Odebeck and Ford was a fun fight, you know, with all the build up. I think here on True School, we did a great job of promoting that fight. You know, me and Raymond Ford going back and forth on Twitter. It was a lot of fun. Um, it made it made the event really exciting. And the fight was um, a classic featherweight title fight. I mean, so I would say that fight it was my first time in upstate New York. Um, I, 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 went, I went to the Boxing Hall of Fame that same day. I, I went to the Boxing Hall of Fame that same day and um that was special so probably that fight just just on the fact that the fight was great and i went to the boxing hall of fame apart from angelo's fight that's the fight i like i enjoyed the most and then even like after even that even though i was wrong and ford got the uh, knockout in the, in the in the 12th round even the little clip me and him shot to me was a very special moment because you know ford um showed a lot of class and um you know it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And even seeing Odebeck at the airport the next day was a lot of fun. So just that fight right there. That, that, that fight to me is one of the best fights um, I've ever been to, that I've ever covered, that I've ever attended. I mean, it was a special, special night of boxing, special day of boxing, you know, just from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. So I would say that one. But the, listen, man, there's still a lot more. Major Key Boxing, shout out to my man Glenn. Hope all is well, Glenn. Good to see you, champ. He says, I heard you met D-Style. Yeah, I met him last night. It was, a uh, caught me off guard a little bit, man. I, I like, you know, I was, I, I don't know how I came out. I, I hope I came off well, but when I when I met him, I was kind of like in a, uh, I, I was on the way to go see uh, my boy Angelo. Angelo Lee was there at the fight, so I was going to go sit with him. But I, you know, I, I, I stopped and I talked to him for a couple minutes, and it, it was cool, man. He's a good dude. You know, shout out to D-Style Boxing. He's one of the, I, I, I give my respect to, Everybody that's made contributions to this this whole space, everyone that's made contributions to this whole space on YouTube, I give my respect. He's been here even before me, and um, so it was cool to meet him. You know, I, I wish I could have stayed and talked a little longer, but uh, I met him, and I met uh, Luna Tune Boxing. This guy Luna Tune Boxing who does little boxing cartoons. It was super, it was super cool meeting him too because I remember five years ago when Luna Tune Boxing started getting popular on Instagram. I think I gave him an interview. I um. I gave him an interview and it was pretty cool to meet him because I, I never knew what the hell he looked like because we did it on the phone. So it was it was great, man. Um, I'm happy. It was it was it was, a, it was a fun night. It was a beautiful night. And um, by the way, guys, I'm, I'm gonna, I want to say this. I want I want to say this now that now that it's on my, on my mind. I got I got the email yesterday. I I will be covering the Diego Pacheco fight here in Vegas this weekend. 
um, in Richard Hitchens versus Gustavo Lemos. I will be at that fight. So I know it's not a big fight, but if anybody's going to be in Vegas for that fight, let me know. I love meeting the fine folks here on um, YouTube and talking with people that watch the channel and support the program. So, you know, it's not a big fight, but if anybody's going to be there, let me know because I'll be there. And it um, should be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, man, it's all love. He was happy to meet you, bro. Yeah, me too. I was happy to meet him as well. You die, Shigyoka got his pro exposed. Jinjiro was always better. I haven't watched the fight yet, but I saw he lost to Melvin Jerusalem. Shout out to Melvin Jerusalem. He's now the two-time minimum weight champion. Um, I'm sticking to my guns. I don't care that he lost, Tyro. I think you die, Shigyoka is still the tougher fight for Oscar Colazzo than Jinjiro. I don't, I don't care what you say. Um... What's up, BT? How was it at the events, bro? It's JK13. Good to see you, champ. It was good, man. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. I thought PVC did a great job of pacing the event. I thought um, it moved pretty smoothly. I think people were pretty satisfied. It was, a, it, was a, it was a good night of boxing. It was a good product, and hopefully it continues. You know, I want, I want all the promoters to do well and work with each other and put on great events. Don't do no good to you know, see people failing. BT, do you ever go to Diet Davis gym in Florida or Derek Santos' gym? I've uh, so Diet Davis' gym is a gym called I think it's called Boca Boxing District. It's, it's way up there in Boca Raton. It's like it's two counties over from me, so it's kind of far from where I live because I live way out the way. But um, I never been I never been to Diet's gym, but I've been to uh, Derek's gym plenty of times. I've been to uh, Boca Raton Powell. I've been to Delray Beach Boxing with Derek. I even took I I took a boxing class at Derek one time like five years ago. So, um, yeah, man, uh, I, I know me and Derek are pretty cool. Me and Derek um, have been getting, me and Derek, Chris Santos have been cool for like what? I'm going to say five, six years. Really, really, um, really, really, you know, really, really good guy. One of, the, one of the genuine good guys in boxing. Jamie from Punch Perfect Boxing says, Jinjiro is the better brother, but you say you die as a better brother. Interesting. No, I don't, I don't, know, if, I don't know if you die as better than Jinjiro. But I just I, I I like you die, I like you die Shigyoko's chances in an Oscar Colazzo fight more than Jinjiro, because Jinjiro is a you know he's a he's a very strong fighter power puncher, but so is Oscar Colazzo and I think Oscar Colazzo has more dimensions in his skill set than a guy like Jinjiro. So I feel like the easier fight of the two would be Jinjiro. I think you has got more with him than Jinjiro. But look, look who knows we'll see. You never know how boxing's gonna pan out because. You know, yeah, you die, should Yoga Kalus today, but who's to say he doesn't beat Asa Colazzo and he's uh the number one, you know? Dania Beach ain't even got a pizza anymore. So when you get a kid from Dania, y'all better appreciate it. That's right. That's right. Y'all better appreciate. No, nah, that, that pizza hut you're talking about, and, and I know exactly which, which one you're talking about, uh Major Key. You're talking about the Pizza Hut right there on South Federal Highway. Um that that Pizza Hut's now uh they turned it into a shenanigans bar, and I've gone there quite a few times over the years. Um, yeah, I know all, I know all about it. You know, yeah, y'all y'all best y'all best appreciate the kid from Daniel. You know, I only I I don't even live in Daniel Beach no more. I haven't lived in Daniel Beach for some years now, but you know, I go back there often, and it's it's so different than when I grew. It's so different than where I grew up. You know. If he had more in him, how did he not lo lose to a guy that Oscar knocked out? All right, Hyro, you walked right into this one. You, you Hyro, do you know what you do you know what you you just did to yourself? Do do you know what you just did to yourself, man? Like, you you're trying to use boxing mathematics. Well, guess what? Okay, Tim Zhu beat Brian Mendoza, but Brian Mendoza knocked off Fundura. So, what are you talking about? Styles make fights, dudes. Just because one guy beats one guy doesn't mean the other guy can beat him. Brian Mendoza beat Fundura. But Fundura, but, but, but Fundura beat Zoo. And, and Brian Mendoza lost to Zoo. So things aren't, out, aren't, aren't always as cut out and dry as we think, you know? So I stand by it. With you guys, Yoga, I stand by it. My family hates pizza, but I like that pizza. Pizza Hut? I mean, I don't, I don't know. So I, I used to like really like when I was a kid. I, I guess when you, when you're a kid, and you don't know no better. You just you go to all the corporate pizza chains. You don't care. Like you don't give a damn. You go and 
you just eat whatever's there. But like as I got older, I started working. I started, I started working at like, like real pizza places and going to eat real pizza. I'm like, I can't eat. Cor I can't really like enjoy cor corporate pizza the way I used to because I spent three years making pizza. So I feel like Domino's and a lot of these places are just lazy the, 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 way, the way they make the pizza. Especially Domino's. Domino's is trash. Before I let the topic alone, 50 Cent does have a reputation in the music industry for being a government snitch, which people believe it or not. That's why I leave it to others. Listen, man, when it comes to like a lot of these rappers, let, 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 let's be honest, guys. A lot of these rappers, a lot of them are snitches. Um, a lot of these rappers are snitches, man. Not, the very few rappers actually live what they really talk in their raps. I mean, 50 Cent, it named himself after a famous stick-up kid in, the, in, in New York in the, in the crack era, Kelvin, Calvin, 50 Cent Martin, I think that was his name. You know, little short dude, he used to just shoot everybody because he couldn't fight, you know. Um, a lot of these guys are not like that, for real. You know, 50 Cent, a lot of these guys will snitch on their friends and, and, and do what they got to do so they can stay on the streets, you know. But that's neither here nor there. God bless everybody. I'm just, I'm just a kid from Dania talking to boxing fans about whatever they put in my comment section. Um, Shinobi says, if Angelio can't get a title shot, I would personally love a fight against Ruben Villa. And, and I know for a fact from speaking to Angelo that so would he. He would love to fight Ruben Villa. I would love him for that Ruben Villa. Um, I'm sure, because I, I know Ruben Villa's team quite well. I know his trainer, Sam Garcia, good guy. Uh, I've talked to Ruben on a couple of occasions. Good fighter, good guy. I don't think there are guys that would duck the smoke. I think, um... They're going to try to go the... What route are they going to go? I think they're, they're trying to go the WBC route. They're trying to go the WBC route and get that title off of Ray Vargas. Um, if not, you know, then if they, can't, if they can't get that fight and Angelo can't secure the WBA title fight or the IBF title fight with Venado, then that's obviously a, a great and amazing alternative fight, you know? Did I say Roman Villa? I'm talking about, we're, we're talking about Ruben Hyro, Ruben Villa. LOL, just a kid from Daniel. You're damn right. Daniel Beach, you know, the whole shout out, shout out. You know what? Shout out to the whole Daniel Beach, all the subsections of Daniel Beach, you know? Daniel Beach Heights, Maluga Gardens, Liberia, East Daniel, Daniel Beach itself. Let's go. Daniel Beach stand up, the first city in Broward County. The home of, and it's so it's so fitting, right? The home of the gym I trained at, Canino's Boxing Gym. I'm wearing my Canino's Boxing Gym shirt right now. This the, this the place, guys. If you, if you, for those of you that don't know, Canino's Boxing Gym. This the place, and y'all see the address. Canino's Boxing Gym. That's the place that made BT. Without Canino's Boxing Gym, there is no brand, there is no BT. There is no true school sports. I'm not here right now. So shout out to Daniel B. Shout out to Canino's Boxing Gym. Um, BT. I'm watching on my TV. I would be watching. Uh, I, I could be watching anything in the world, but I'm here supporting this real ass page. Thank you, Kev. And Kev, you're a good dude, man. I, um, I appreciate you um, a lot. I appreciate a lot of you guys, man. That's why, like, um, when I'm tired and I don't want to do things, it's like I don't even worry about proving people wrong. It's more about proving people right. The Kevs of the world, the Shinobis, the Felipe's, the the Philippines 413s, the Hyros. You know, just my 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 real supporters, the guys, the people that I really like. And like he said. You guys could be doing anything in the world. It's, it's literally Easter Sunday, and there's 27 of y'all here just listening to me ramble on, rambling and waffling about boxing. So God bless everyone in the world. Um, I'm not going to speak too much on it now, but um, I've had some ideas for some new type of uh, live formats I want to do um, in the future. I'll, I'll, I'll speak on it later once I iron everything out. But um, yeah, after, after this 90 days of boxing is over, I'm going to take like a, maybe like a four or five day break from lives and... Um, recharge a little bit, and then there should be some announcements on some new boxing programming here on True School Sports. Stuff that I think you guys would like and would definitely make the pay the channel even better. So, um, yeah, man, just thank you, thank you, thank you, Kev, and thank you, everyone who's here. Um, BT, did you did you see my message throughout the week? My week, yeah, I did. I I, I purposely chose to ignore them. I, I purposely chose to ignore them because the first time you messaged me, Hiro. I was in the middle of like a crisis. I, I went to the wrong airport and I almost missed my flight and didn't even get to Phoenix on time. So I didn't have time to go on with you about PBC. And then last night I was just too irritated and tired to message you back. So 
I'll call you. I'll call you up soon. Don't worry. I'll call you. I, I, I've been seeing your messages. I, I've been seeing you flapping your gums. You know, uh, <laughs> I have been seeing you flapping your gums about every and everything PBC related. So it is what it is. Um, JK13 says, I enjoy your lives, bro. You're a real boxing fan who knows what you're talking about. Thank you, man. Thank you. And um, not just that, you know, like I said, man, there's so many things I want to tell you guys about, but I just, I got to wait on some things. I, I'm a little more than just a real boxing fan, but, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for being here. I, I enjoy having you guys here. I enjoy interacting. Um, have you ever thinking about creating a membership for your community to join? If you did, I would definitely join. I have before, but then I was like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I thought about it a couple of times. Maybe I think I think now with these, with this ninety days of boxing, I feel like I've grown a better relationship with my 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 my, my audience. So now I feel like it'd be the right time to do it. So probably yeah, that, that that'll probably be something we wind up doing this next coming month. That's a good idea. We'll do that. Black Ray Donovan, what's good, champ? Shout out to you. He says it's good to see you, brother. Good to see you. What's a big boxing event this weekend? Richards and Hitchens. Um, Richards and Hitchens. Where, where did that comment? Where did I see it? Yeah, that's the fight of the week. Uh, Richards and Hitchens versus Gustavo Lemos in conjunction with Diego Pacheco. That'll be April 6th, uh, this coming Saturday, April 6th, here in Vegas at the Fountain Blue. Uh, I actually got the email yesterday. I'm, I'm covering the fight. So really excited about that. Shout out to the fine folks at Matchroom Boxing for allowing me to be great. You know, some of these promotional companies... Um, they, they, they disrespect me, man. They, a lot, a lot, they, they, they openly disrespect your boy BT. You know, I, I'll, I'll apply for credentials and I, I know I'm not entitled to anything. You know, I'm not entitled in life. You're not entitled to anything. You're not entitled to like success. You're not entitled to love from even your friends or family. They'll, they'll like the world. The world's a cruel place. You're not entitled to nothing, but I genuinely feel like, you know, I've worked very hard over the years and paid my dues and. You know, sometimes I'll apply for credentials to these fights, and they they deny me. And then I, I look at some of the channels that are sitting press row, and they're people with like seventy thousand less subscribers than me, and forty million views less than me. And it's like, well, they can't be denying me because I'm not as good as them. So it has to be something personal because it, it can't be based on ability, you know. So that's neither here nor there. I, I had a bit of an experience with that recently, so. I appreciate I appreciate people that do like give me a chance to shine and be great because a lot of people in the boxing industry I don't know what it is like you know I just I just I stay to myself I'm on my business I say I say my little opinions on boxing I don't bother nobody I don't I don't fuck with nobody you know um, unless they fuck with me and um, you know they they they, they want to stop they want to stop my shine man they want to stop the true school sports shine but look if you couldn't stop my shine four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, all those years ago, all these years, you're not going to stop it now. I'm a, I'm a seasoned professional now. My confidence is through the roof. I know who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm a matured man now. I'm not no youngin anymore. So you're not going to stop true school sports. You're not going to stop the, the shine. The, the work speaks for itself. The interviews speak for themselves. I don't even got to talk shit no more. The, the, work, the work speaks for itself. And that's why we're still here after all these years. And we have this thing called longevity, you know? So, you know, I don't know why I even went on that tangent, but... DT, I used to watch another YouTube boxing platform before they went to Funk, but at this point, your platform on boxing is my favorite to me because you're a boxing purist and you interact sincerely with people. I try to, man. I I try to never big time people because I remember a time when um I remember a time, man, when I had like I, I don't forget them times. I remember having thirty thousand subscribers and ten thousand subscribers and one thousand subscribers and nobody gave a fuck. Like I remember nobody cared, or at least it felt like that, right? So now that I have this platform, I, I never take a day for granted. Last year in my life taught me so much about not taking life or people for granted. Because, you know, I had, I had, I had a, a buddy of mine in South Florida get gunned down at Walmart in the middle of the day. One of my, my mentors passed away on me just out of nowhere. So just, you know, you, know, you, you don't take things for granted in life. That's what I learned recently. Uh, B. Young, shout out to you for the super chat. Uh, for, good to see you, B. Young. It's always great seeing... People like yourself here, um, I know you're always here in the, in, the, in, the, in the live showing love, so I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Dave Messer says, I lost my money betting on Tim Zoo 600, and he comes with a super chat to say that. Thank you, man. Sh yeah, shout out to you, man. Uh, Tim Zoo, 
so disappointing. And I, I'm gonna have so much to say about him tomorrow. So, so, so disappointing. And I know people don't like when I say when I use that word disappointing because they say, oh, well, his corner let him down and he had blood in his eyes. And that that is true. Guys, that, that is true. He did have blood in his eyes. Maybe his corner did let him down, but like I've said for many other fighters, fighters I like and fighters I don't like, boxing is a results-based business. In 20 years from now, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, very few people are going to remember that he had blood in his eyes and his corner was trash. All they're going to remember is that he lost to Sebastian Fundura. So that's why I say it's, it's a results-based business. And um, even before the blood in his eyes, I was very disappointed with his uh, punch selection. You know, like in, even when he was in the rounds, he was winning. There just wasn't much of a body attack. And I feel like you got that big, tall, lanky motherfucker, like with the damn, all that body to hit. And you were right there in the pocket and you chose to just headhunt the whole fight. I'll say a lot more tomorrow, but um, I, I, I'm very disappointed with Tim Zhu. BT, my friend said that the show last night was a cheap ripoff of Showtime Boxing. <laughs> I mean, well, it's the same it's the same company pretty much, you know, same people running the show. So, I mean, I, I can see where he says that, but now they, they, they did a great job. Uh, let me see. What else? What else? We got Luis Trevino says it's discrimination. Maybe, man, maybe. I don't, I don't like to play the race card, but, um, you know, sometimes that's what it is. And Gotti wants to know, BT, do you train? What's your favorite bag training style to use? What's my favorite training style and bag to use? I train here and there. Um, when, I, when, I'm in, when I'm in Florida, I go train uh, at this one gym with my, with, with my boy Eric Lances Jr. Um, at his gym. Uh, so, yeah, my, my favorite bag to use is I, I, I like the punching bag, man. I feel like the punching bag is the best bag in the world. I know some fighters, depending on the style, like to use the double-ended bag. Like a, a lot of the slick fighters like to use the, like to use the double-end bag. Some people like the speed bag. Some people like the aqua bag. I like the punching bag because the punching bag, I feel, is where you can work on your range. You can work on your, uh, your combinations. Um, and you can just do it round after round after round. So I, I, I love the punching bag. When I train, sometimes I, I, I'll stay in the punching bag 10, 12, 15 rounds straight. You know, it's great. I love, I love, I love just the regular punching bag. And as far as style, um, I like to, I definitely like to be aggressive. You know, I like to come forward. Um, I like to fight, you know. I told you Fondora was good. Brian Mendoza took beating man. Man, he could be shot. Um, I actually don't look. I I want to reserve all that talk for tomorrow. I think you'll like what I got to say about Brian Mendoza. Um, I I don't think he shot. I don't think those fights took anything out of him. I think he had plenty left in the tank. I I I think um he could have won that fight against Boachuk. I just feel like he's got tools, and they're not probably being applied. And I think that's down to uh, Ismail Salas, um, you know. Now, and I, and I'll say I'll say this last thing about Hiro because I'm not I'm trying to save everything for tomorrow. But you 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 like to shit on Brian Mendoza, and I understand you like to shit on him. He 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 knocked your fighter out and 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 put him in witness protection for a whole year. But do you realize that by Fundura winning the fight, that actually makes Brian Mendoza? more legit that he beat the unified champion. He beat the unified champion. He beat one of the best 54 pounders in the world. He land like Tim Zhu was able to land some of those same punches on Fedora and Fedora didn't go nowhere. But when Brian Mendoza hit his ass, he was on Queer Street. I mean, come on. That Fedora went enhanced Brian Mendoza. So no, I don't think he's shot. I don't think he's um I think he's fine, bro. I just think um his, he's got tools to be better than what he's showing, and he has at times against lesser opposition, but I think he's reached that point in his career where Salas has taken him as far as he can go, and he needs to he needs to get with a trainer that, that, that teaches his fighters to punch the target, you know? It's being too cute, to being too Cuban. You know, because you, you saw what happened to Boachuk. You saw in the 11th and 12th round when, when Brian Mendoza really decided to put his punches together. You saw what was happening to Boachuk. Who do you think won the 112 title fight, bro? I want Ken Shell versus the Mexican guy who I forgot who won. I forgot his name. You're talking about when he fought Carlos Connie Salas? I thought Ken Shell barely won that fight. But if you're not talking about uh, that fight, then uh, you're probably talking about Adrian Curiel. Adrian Curiel just lost to Nochinga. So um, I would like to see... Oh, you're talking about the fight on PBC. My bad. No, Martinez versus Cordova. Martinez won the fight. Uh, uh, Julio Cesar Martinez beat Angelina Cordova. And um, he wound up 
it was a good, it was a good fight. You know, I, I missed most of it because that was that was the fight that I decided to um, really go ahead and uh, go get my food and whatnot. So I, I missed most of the fight, but I know it was competitive. I know Cordova made it close. Who do you think gives Inouye a real test at one twenty six? Uh, Angelo Leo, easily. Uh, Angelo Leo, possibly Shushu Carrington. I like that fight a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll say Angelo Leo and Shushu Carrington. Um, and look, it depends. I, I still like Odebeck Komatov, man. I know he lost to Ford, but I'm still high on him. I still think Odebeck Komatov can be champion. But I, I need the I need the, I need the Odebeck that I need the Odebeck that was trained with Timur Bragamov because the Odebeck that trained with Joel Diaz isn't the same Odebeck that trained with Timur Bragamov. The Odebeck that trained with Diaz was too much of a boxer. And it was working. He was out boxing for most of the fight until his knee gave out and you know they they go in there and they um they weighed the fight off. But the the order back that trained with Timar Bragamov, the boxer puncher, that guy could be anybody in the world. Um and, and, and he wasn't that he wasn't that guy when he fought Ford. Um and a lot of that I think is due to the the way they train in California. Not to say that not not not, not to down Joel Diaz, but like the Uzbeks there they're just like too regimented and too, you know, I don't know. It's just different. Like when he was a Timor Bragman, he was a different fighter. I've seen it in the gym. I've seen it in his fights. When he fought Ford, his punches were really, really wide. Wider than they should have been. Wider than they were when he trained with Ibragamov. So um I thought um I, I think I think if he's able to if him and Timor Bragamov were able ever able to reconcile their differences. And start training together, and I can I can get the boxer puncher Odebeck that I was ranting and raving about. That guy could give Inoue a great fight. I, I I still think that you know, um, but we'll see we'll see how it goes. But yeah, those you know those are the guys Espinosa will give him a good fight. But for me personally, I think honestly uh, all the champions there, I I would favor Inoue to be all of them. Like Espinosa is a good fight. He's tall, but I think you know Inoue will beat him. You guys are gonna think I'm being biased. I'm not. I'm I'm really not trying to be. I'm I'm, I'm not being biased, guys. Like. Like I, I, I'm gonna bang. I will die on this hill. I really think Angelo Leo will give in away one of the toughest fights at 126. Like, and you, know, you know what? Just watch April 10th. You guys just tune in April 10th and just watch the bias fight. You'll see. It's better that you just watch him fight than me rant and rave about him. Because anything, anything I say about Angelo Leo or Philip Hergovich or any of these fights that you guys know I'm cool with, you guys just are gonna say I'm being biased. But um, look, there's there's plenty. I, I know a lot of guys. I know a lot of fighters. And just because I'm cool with the fighter doesn't it doesn't skew my uh, perception of their abilities. There's there's fighters that I'm really cool with that I'm not sitting here that I don't think will ever sniff a world title, you know. But, but they're good people, you know. One twenty six is the same is is the division where Inoue was really solidifying himself as an all time great. Yeah, that's the division where I really like like we know Inoue is great. He's going to the Hall of Fame. He's one of the greatest Japanese fighters ever. Like he's a great fighter. Like we, I love Inoue, but one twenty six to me is going to be the ultimate lit, litmus test for him because there's bigger guys there. They punch harder, and there's some there's some, there's some really top some tough guys in that division. He's going to have to go through. So I can't wait. Um. Hiram wants to know, BT, was there empty seats, man? No, nah, it was it was a there were a couple empty seats. They they uh PBC sectioned off part of the upper deck, so they 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 did scale down the capacity. They didn't use the entire like arena. So if on the broadcast they were telling you it's so it was sold out, it wasn't really sold out. It was just sold out for the seats they used. Most of the seats were pretty full, but like I think after East Pitbull Cruise fought fought, the arena emptied out a little bit because I think a lot of people there, believe it or not, were there to see Pitbull Cruz. But it was a great crowd. But it wasn't no like true sellout, you know, because they didn't use the, it was it wasn't like when Tank fought Ryan. I'll put I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you like that. It wasn't like when Tank fought Ryan. Um, BT, I heard you had tears of joy when Sneeze says Strada won. Nah, I was pretty calm actually, you know. Um, I was happy for her, you know. Sneeze is great. I like I like Sneeze as a, as a fighter. I'm happy for her. I, I've I've been vindicated um, for what I thought for years. I remember, look, like a lot, a lot of people think that. Oh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be blunt. I'm gonna keep it. A, I'm gonna keep it all the way a stack when I talk about this particular subject. A lot of people are like BT. You, you just think Sinise, you just think highly Sinise Estrada because you're, uh, you're, you're physically attracted to her. That I'm, I'm, I'm physically attracted to her. So 
like many guys in the world, so I think highly of her. And like, no, I don't give a fuck about that. Like, there's plenty of girls in boxing that are physically attractive. And I don't think anywhere as close to as highly of them as I do Sinisa Estrada. I fought highly about Sinisa Estrada for eight years, since 2016, since she was like 8-0, 9-0. Um, and I always thought she was great. Um, I always thought she was one of the best fighters in women's boxing. I always thought that she was one of the best foot in boxing. Go back and check, go back and check the video archives. The videos from 2016 are still up. So, you know. You know, and I'm happy she won, man, because I don't know why, like, and I understand it's boxing. I understand like emotions run high. People are prideful in their work. But like people gotta stop being so sensitive. Like like fighters and coaches and trainers have to stop being so damn sensitive when I do a video and I give my honest assessment of a fight and a fighter and and they don't like it because I'm not on on the side with their fighter because you know your 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 Kavai is coach and I, and I, and I still like her. I got I got respect for her. I enjoy speaking with her. I like I like Coach G. I like Gloria Alvarado. Um, I, I like her her her, her whole camp. You know, Alan Garcia, Right Hook Roxy, her her daughter. Um. You know, all her fighters, good people. I got nothing bad to say about her, but she came up to me on she came up to me at the fights and she was like, Oh, good luck to your girl. She's gonna need it. Um, you know, uh, I saw your video and what you said, and I'll think about it. I'll think about that next time you ask me for an interview. And I'm just like, man, bro, are we getting that sensitive? It's like I didn't even say anything bad about Yokovai. I gave her all the credit in the world as an intelligent pressure fighter. I just think Sinisa Estrada was gonna be too smart. Too clever for her, and guess what? When they fought, it came to pass, and I was correct. So it's like, what the fuck, man? Like, can we, can we please, can we please, like, as a society, and as boxing, stop getting so damn sensitive? It's happening everywhere. It, it, it happened in baseball, like the um, the the, the Avi C. Garcia, the the outfielder for the Marlins. Like, this dude's a bum. This guy, this guy's getting paid more money than anybody on the damn team. He hasn't done shit for like three years, three three or four years as as, as a Marlins player. All right, he comes out immediately, starts striking out, hitting into double plays, and everybody boos him. And then he, this 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 guy says, "Oh, I don't like that. I'm getting booed. It's not fair." No, it's not fair that you're that that that, that you're that you're stealing millions of dollars from the Marlins and impersonating a fucking baseball player. It's not fair that your your people like you, players like you, or why the damn franchise ain't sniffed the World Series in 21 years. So I'm just tired of athletes, man. Like I'm tired of athletes. In all sports, not just boxing, boxing, baseball, basketball, every sport except pretty much hockey, every freaking sport there is, athletes get hypersensitive when people give their honest assessment on things. And it's not personal. I don't hate nobody. Like, like uh, my life is too good to hate anybody. God has blessed me tremendously. Guys, I am a kid. I'm a young man who graduated at the bottom third of my graduating class. I did not go to college. I didn't, uh, the, uh, you know, I grew up in a, in a freaking single parent household. My dad had to work two jobs, make ends meet. The statistics were stacked against me to not, to not do well in life, all right? And guess what? At 29 years old, I have positive things going on in my life. I'm covering boxing. I'm, I'm, I, I make money of doing what I love. I haven't worked a regular job in years now. And, and God has blessed me tremendously. So I don't have, I've been so blessed in my life, I don't have time to hate anybody. So it's not that deep. It's just a boxing opinion. Stop being so butthurt. Stop being so damn sensitive. That's crazy. LOL, did someone have to hold you back when Yoko Valles called Sereti or was she a girl so you let it go? I just let it go because I was like, first of all, it caught me off guard because I was like, I was waiting to get into the media entrance and she just comes up to me and... She's being all passive aggressive. I'm just like, whatever, man. Like, I'm just trying to get my content and just do what I came here to do in Arizona. I'm not trying to be arguing with people over a boxing opinion. You just, you, they had, they had, listen, they had the final say. They had the final say to prove that I was wrong. The same, the same chance that Raymond, that Raymond Ford got to prove me wrong, they got to prove me wrong, and they didn't prove me wrong. They, 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 they didn't do what Raymond Ford did. They did the opposite. They lost. You know, was it a good fight? Yes. Was Yokovai competitive? Yes. Does Yokovai deserve? All the respect in the world as a top grade, world class, creme de la creme, top shelf, world championship fighter. One thousand percent, you bet your ass she does. But she didn't be no damn Sinisa Estrada, and there's no two ways about it. And that crowd that was there at the arena, they were on some bullshit because when they announced the decision initially, I was there. They didn't even boo. They were cheering. Everyone was cheering. It wasn't until they stuck the camp, the, the the microphone in Sinisa's face. That they started booing like crazy. And, there, and and I don't know how many Costa Ricans were there, but there were a lot of Costa Rican flags in the crowd. So maybe it was all just the Costa Ricans that were there. I don't know, but it was a weird, it was a weird crowd, you know. So 
just where we're at, man. I I I had to come through and I had to I had to like just to speak on it because I'm getting tired of it. I see it from so many fighters, like in boxing, um, like even what the guys like Devin and Shakur and all these all these fighters. Like it's not that deep, guys. Nobody, I don't hate no, I don't hate nobody enough to to sit there and like let it affect my life like that. It's just a boxing opinion. What is some of we have seen some weird shit in boxing these last several months. Rambo's was a Lubin last night's fight. Next thing you know, Delorme will be the first guy to go. <laughs> yeah, he might. He might be right. Yes, sir. Apparently, Tim is a hype job after losing. Yet Fandora was gifted a win. I didn't score the fight live, but um, I thought I thought Fandora did enough to win. I don't. I wouldn't use that word gift. I'm planning on going to the Bam fight in June on June 29th. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll probably, you know what, I, listen, I had a great time in Arizona. Shout out to everybody in Arizona. I had an amazing time. Everyone in Arizona was so kind and hospitable towards me. Um, I, I also enjoyed the Arizona Mexican girls too. That, that was that was an added plus. But nah, man, Arizona was great. And um, I'm looking forward to going to, to, to uh, Arizona in June as well, you know? Let me see. I saw one comment. Where's that one comment? Uh, Elite Vibration says Brandon Figueroa beats Inoue. That's a guy that I. You know what? That's another one. That's that's a guy that I think could give Inoue a tough fight as well. I, I like that fight. Brandon Figueroa is a hell of a fighter. Um, the Falling Star says, "How did you like the Diamondbacks game in the stadium? Uh, it was a great game, man. The the Diamondbacks pretty much ended the game by the third inning. Uh, they won the game sixteen to one. They scored fourteen runs in the third inning alone." And it was a great stadium, man. Um, I, I don't think it's not. I've been to like fourteen baseball stadiums in my life. It, it the Diamondback Stadium doesn't crack the top five for me, but it's definitely uh, it's in the middle of the pack. It's a good stadium. I liked it. I'll go back to a game there. Let me say this: boxing personalities do act sensitive and arrogant. I experienced that with Canine Budget, who wasn't even that good of a boxer. His only claim to fame was a contender series on ESPN. Well, I'm not gonna disrespect Kanan Budridge. You know, he 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 contributed, you know, his blood, sweat, and tears and hard labor to the sport. And that's more than a lot of us have. So you gotta give him that respect. But um look, man, I mean, look, I I, I raise my hand. You know, sometimes I have my moments of being sensitive. I feel like if you if you come here every day for as long as I have and people talk enough, you're gonna have some moments of just lashing out. You know, we're all humans, right? But it's just like the you see it a lot in like basketball and 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 um in NFL and you know in boxing. Everyone's like, yeah, stay over there on that side, you know. Like, bro, we're just doing our job. We're just doing our jobs, man. BT, did you see the heavyweight fight in England? No, I haven't, man. I heard it was great. Shout out, shout out to Fabio Worley. Fabio Worley might be one of boxing's biggest overachievers to to go from being a guy that was a white collar fighter to now you're beating guys that were meddling in the Olympics, I mean, big time stuff from him. Shout out to him. BT, what games do you play in real life, or do you got do you not, do you not got time for it? The only games I play in real life are whatever I have on my uh, PlayStation Two. I play a lot of like PlayStation Two, just to like mellow out sometimes. So I play a lot of NHL hits, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Uh, Virtual Fighter Four, NBA Ballers. Uh, what else we play? That's a lot of games. FIFA World Cup Two Thousand Two is another one I like to play. You know, whatever, whatever I got at the crib. You know, I, I got like thirty games in my house, so whatever I got there. Uh, Knockout Kings Two Thousand Two. I just bought that. That's a fun game to play. You know, so I, I don't really play like the the newer stuff as much, but whatever I have at home. Uh, supporter of boxing, shout out to him. He says, BT, do you think Laura can beat Janibek? That's a great question. Um, shit, I don't know, man. I, I want to say he can't, but damn, man. Every time he's ready to write, write Laura off, he reminds you that he's still an elite class fighter. So I won't write him off. Yeah, I think he can beat Jenny Beck, Johnny Beck. Why not? Yeah, no, PS2, man. We, we, we still playing PlayStation 2. That's, 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 that's the, the best system of all time. Uh, Need for Speed. Uh, I got that game. I got Gran Turismo. I got all kinds of games, man. So when I get the time, I'll, that's all I'm playing is that PlayStation 2. But um, I don't really play like PS5 or anything like that. I don't play like computer games. It's just PS2. The 
The best night of boxing was last night. Every car was vintage Don King programming. Also, Amazon Prime is the, is the new national TV, but not free. Love you. Shout out to you, Pepperoon. Good to see you as always. Champ Hope all as well. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. man. I hope that this isn't just like an I hope I really hope from PBC that this isn't the an exception. I really and truthfully hope that this is the standard of all the new boxing programming. And I hope that Al Heyman and Fighter, Al Heyman has learned from some of his mistakes that he had in the early days with PBC because it's good for boxing if they do well on Amazon Prime. And you hate on Laura, man. He's the only solid fighter I like. No, I don't hate Laura. I just tell you the truth about him. He's not, he's overrated. He's one of the most, like, he, yeah, he can beat the Zarafas of the world still and the Spike O'Sullivan's and the, and the Thomas Cornflake Lamanas of the world. But, like, yeah, come on, man. Laura, Laura is one of the most overrated Cuban fighters, PBC fighters in boxing. I, I, I'm sticking by that. He gets so much credit for giving away the fight against Canelo. I don't want to hear that bullshit about Laura, bro. Congrats on his win, but don't don't come to me with that bullshit about Laura Hyro. Only God knows how many hours I I put into MVP baseball with Manny Ramirez on the cover. That was a good one, but I actually liked the one right before. But uh, MVP baseball two thousand four with Albert Pujols on the cover. That was that was the one in that series I liked the most. BT ever I I, I heard I heard ever since Sao Paul T played Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, um, ever ever since then he thinks he look, look I I can't speak about him I'm I'm not here to speak on other content creators you know because I don't I don't really to be honest to be told I don't watch a whole ton of other content creators because I I be in my own world but um, you know God bless him. Um, Eric says, BT, the reason I brought up your point about sensitivity was because I was around legends and champions in the 80s, and they usually didn't give a fuck about any of that disrespectful energy. They didn't give off that disrespectful energy. Yeah, because you know what it is? Boxing guys is a reflection and a microcosm of society and life. So as a society, we have, re we have regressed. Like, like men have become straight bitches now like in, in life. Like, it's just the truth. Men have become soft. They don't know how to take criticism. Um, they don't know how to be men about anything. So that's why it's reflected in boxing. It's reflected in um, just the world. You know, I, I, I could get deep into all this stuff, but you know, we're, on, we're on YouTube. So maybe, maybe, maybe when I start True School Sports on Rumble, <laughs> the 1,000% the, the unfiltered True School Sports on Rumble, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll say it for that. But um, yeah, man, society, society man, is... Uh, Boxing is a reflection of it. That's why you got fighters that are talking about they don't want to, they, they, they can't progress in the sport because I'm only 23. It's the pressure though. You know, that, that stuff like that. But meanwhile, you had, you had Salvador Sanchez, world champion at 22 years old. You had, you had guys back in the day, some of the greatest fighters of all time, world champion two times over at 22, 23, you know, pay-per-view stars by 24, you know, and, guy, and guys guys don't want to take a, a fight in the top five or top 10 of the, of the rankings because they're only 23 and they got time. Like, come on, man, get the fuck, get the hell out of here. Where are we at? Where, where, what, what, what are we doing? You know, what, what are they, uh, what are they, what are they putting in the water these days that's got these men, got some, got some of these people in the world acting son so unmasculine, you know? That's why I feel bad for women sometimes because I feel like women, women gotta um, women 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 gotta be the man. Women gotta like slim pickings because men ain't being men, man. You know, it's easy to point the finger and say, oh, uh, women are this and women are that. But yeah, a lot of the reason why why women are how they are is because men ain't being men. That's just the truth. We supposed to be the head. We supposed to set the tone, and we not setting the tone. As a collective, as a whole, so just just food for thought on that. Kind of, I kind of got off tangent from boxing, but it all ties into boxing because, like I said, boxing and a lot of the fighters and the way the culture of boxing kind of is these days, and even back then and in yesteryear, boxing will always be a reflection of society at that time. So fighters in the eighties and the seventies and the sixties, if they weren't giving off that disrespectful energy and they weren't so hypersensitive about stuff all the damn time, then guess what? You know, that that that's because back in the day, men were men. And women were men women and you know we just
We were we were a lot stronger as a, a society, in my opinion. But um, how do you think Arguello would have did against Floyd Mayweather? That, that, that would have been a great fight. Um, I would have loved to see Floyd fight like a real. I mean, he fought Corrales early in his career, so I give him credit for that one. But I, I, I would have liked to see Floyd fight more taller, rangier boxer puncher type fighters. Arguello would have um, would have really fit that description. He couldn't have no lapses in defense against uh, Arguello. But look, Floyd, man, I, it's funny when you get when you when when you get older in age, because you know when I was younger, maybe there were some things about boxing I didn't quite understand at the time. You know, you, you grow older, you get wiser. You can't grow physically as you get older, so you go mentally and you mature. Um, I think Floyd. I think I, I really do think Floyd is one of the greatest fighters of all time, and I and I don't like, I don't like when people try to downplay him because listen. Um, you could sit here and you could sulk and you could say that he had all the circumstances in his favor towards the end of his career. But listen, every fighter got the chance to beat him. They didn't do it. Um, truly a world class fighter. Like seeing the guys, like like honestly, seeing the guys like Crawford and and Spence and all these Waltz fights that have come out there. Floyd Canelo, they call Canelo the face of boxing. Like all these fighters that have come out there. Floyd, they cannot hold the man's jock strap. Not Terence. Not not Crawford. Not 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 Earl, not Canelo, none of these guys. None, none, none of these guys that they, they've propped up as the face of boxing. The only guy that I feel, the only two fighters, three fighters that I feel have really been truly great since Floyd left the game. Like at that all-time great like level are Romel Gonzalez, Naya Inoue, and I'll say like Arthur Betterbiev. Them three guys right there, even like I even throw on a Usyk as well. Them four guys. Everyone else, you know, and not like Crawford. Crawford's still one of my guys, but like Crawford, Crawford's really pissed me off with this Jerron Ennis. This Jerron Ennis stuff really pissed me off. So maybe, maybe I'm maybe, maybe I'm being a little hypersensitive about the Terrence Crawford and Jerron Ennis thing, but I'm just saying like, if we're talking just strictly welterweights, none of these guys hold a candle to Floyd. None of them. None of them. Not Spence. Not Boots. Not, not uh, not Crawford. None of them. He would have beat all of them and beat them all soundly. BT, you you need to subscribe to Office Hand Show Boxing. He has some badass boxing content. Too bad I don't know why he he keeps deleting some videos. Um, he made a really good video about Japan versus Mexico. I know all about Office Hand Show Boxing. Shout out to the OG. Office uh, hand show boxing. He's a he's a great channel. I used to watch. I used to watch his. Uh, he had this one Roman Gonzalez video. I used to watch all the time years ago. Um, he used to get me hyped. Um, surprised. I'm surprised. I never met him. We never interacted like that because I've been around for so long. And he's been around for so long. But um, great channel. Great content. Um, I I don't know if he's still putting out content, but um, I definitely remember him from back in the day, like 2016. Um. Man, I don't like Crosby behavior either, but Ennis won't step step it up in opposi the opposition category. He won't. You know, so I, like, it's not it's not all on Crawford. I just I feel like for everything Crawford went through in his career, you know, with all the bullshit he went through with Spence, I just feel like you know you would think that he would be in a position to where he's more understanding that he wouldn't do the same thing that was done to him. But again, like it's been proven many many times. Um, Fighters will do whatever the circumstances allow them to do. So he's no different than Earl, unfortunately. And that's a that's a harsh truth I had to come to reality with. I like Terrence. I I made a million videos about Terrence beating the brakes off Earl before he ever beat the brakes off Earl when they actually fought. I always was gonna beat Earl, which is why I got angry all those years. But um, you know, just to, he's, the, he's the same as far as, as far as when he got to that position. He, when he got to that position, he was exactly the same as Earl. And it's a sad it's a sad truth. Andre Ward is a guy that nobody can beat. He not even worth talking about. I'm glad he's. I'm glad I retired. Um. I just don't like Floyd's business mentality that other fighters have adopted. But that's not that's not Floyd's fault. People like to always say Floyd ruined boxing, but guess what? People always forget that before Floyd made all that money and became a big star. I remember when Floyd was the clean club pretty boy that was saying all the right things and. Likeable, great smile, personable. He wasn't selling out no tickets. He wasn't selling out no, no arenas. He fought Henry Bruselas in Miami at the Heat Arena and barely had any national media there to cover it. Um, he was doing 
very minuscule pay per view numbers in the beginning. Like Floyd Mayweather had to really earn everything he's got. So you can love Floyd, you can hate Floyd, you can think he's narcissistic, you can think he's a piece of crap, all that stuff. But guess what? You can never say he didn't earn the position he got to. People like to say, oh, they like to say, oh, well, Terrence Crawford and these guys, they earned the right to pick and choose. Nah, man. He, Ter Terrence Crawford never fought no Diego Corrales. Well, name, me, name, me, name me one fighter on his whole resume. He fought as good as Diego, Diego Corrales or De La Hoya. Na name me one. I can't name one. It's ridiculous. These fighters these days, they think they have the audacity and, and, the, and the arrogance to even put themselves in the same conversation as Floyd Mayweather. You know? They want to be, they want to be money Mayweather. But they don't want to go to the pretty boy stage. They don't want to. They don't want to have to have their Henry Bucellas fights and Jesus Chavez and Diego Corrales, you know. So it, it is what it is. A lot of these guys have adopted that mentality because that's what they grew up watching. Um, but it's that that's not Floyd's fault. That's that's their fault. BT, do you think Floyd was scared of Manny back then? If you would have asked me this when, at that time, when I was like, when I didn't know what I know now about the boxing business and just boxing in general. Probably would have said yeah, you know. But now, being older and wiser, I just think both of those guys wanted to maximize the profits on that fight, and um, they did. They 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 price gouged the living hell out of the entire boxing public. They gave us a thirty six minute tap dancing sparring session, and um, it was what it was, you know. I, I, I got to be honest with you guys when it comes to Manny and Floyd. They both had Alex Reason in their camp. Um, Floyd worked at Memo Heredia, uh, right? I think it was Memo Heredia. They both had people in their corners and in their camps that were not, you know, saints that, that had PED history. So I think they're both on that. I think they both were probably on PEDs at some point in their careers. So anybody who's capping saying Manny was on, uh, wasn't on steroids, but Floyd was, or Floyd wasn't on steroids, but Manny was. They're just being fanboys um, of, 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 the, of the fighters. And that's just what it is. The fight happened. I don't really think it did a whole lot for boxing, to be honest with you. I don't, I feel like the, that, that, that fight actually set, that, that fight set a bad precedent for how boxing business is, is conducted and done. Because now everyone wants to marinate a fight. Everyone wants to just wait for the fight to happen. And then a lot of times fights don't even happen when they're supposed to happen. But shout out to everybody here. It's your boy BT, the untouchable True School Sports Empire. You know, we're here live. I can't even believe it, guys. This live has just been flying by. It's been, it's been one of the, it's been one of the, it's just, it's just flown by. I've been having a lot of fun. You guys have been giving me good responses and I've been getting these super chats too. So that, 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 that always, that, that's cool too. But um, yeah, no, happy Easter to everybody, man. Um, hope you guys enjoy your time with uh, your family for Easter. You know, God bless everyone in the world. Jesus Christ is king, you know, every knee and bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is king. We just, we just here to talk boxing and every now and then sprinkling in some good news for the fine folks out there, you know. A lot of people going through a lot of stuff. They were, you know, they wonder why life is so hopeless, you know, because they're seeking, they're seeking for joy in the wrong things. And I'm, I'm, I'm even speaking for myself. I don't search for joy in everything in this world, but the only time I really have any joy is when... I'm walking with the man upstairs, and I'm and I'm and I'm seeking I'm seeking what he wants for my life, and not what BT wants for his life. So, yeah, thank you guys for being here. Um, Harold wants to know: Do I think the dude Pedroza would have beat Salvador Sanchez? I don't have an opinion on that. And you're a hater, Harold. You always want to hate, so I'm not answering. I'm not answering no questions about Salvador Sanchez. Harold, if you ask about Salvador Sanchez, Brian Mendoza, anywhere like that, you're not getting no responses. When Floyd got robbed during the Olympics, it changed. And they interviewed him. It was hard to watch. And, and, and the, the cherry of his innocence, of his ego, was popped. Money made was born. That's what I'm saying. Everyone everyone has all these things to say about Floyd. Well, they say Floyd is mean. Floyd is cocky. Floyd is arrogant. But yeah, when he was a nice, young, clean-cut kid from, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, who just wanted to win the Olympic gold medal for, for his country, and he was a proud American, you know, y'all didn't want to do that. Y'all didn't y'all y'all didn't care about nothing about them tears. So guess what? You know what Floyd did for the rest of his career? He made he made everybody in that ring pay and pay dearly. So, you know, God bless him. He played the game. He let the game play him. As 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 I've gotten older, I've actually grown to admire 
like Floyd, because I, I, I can honestly say, hand on heart, in the deepest part of my heart, I know how dirty this sport is. I know how dirty it is. I know how bad it can get. I know I've listened to and had conversations with managers that don't give a damn about these fighters. So I, I know how cruel it can be. So the fact that he was able, and I know it's funny to say, but the fact that he was able to get out the game with his faculties in check with a lot of money and, and, and had the career he had, God bless the guy. How could I hate on him for that? Now, whether or not he could have beat the guys like Duran and Leonard and Hearns and all them guys, that's, that's up for interpretation. That, that's, a, that's opinion. But to sit here and say he wasn't a great fighter, to sit here and say he wasn't creme de la creme top shelf, to sit here and say that he didn't move the needle and wasn't a true superstar of the sport would be disingenuous. And I feel like a lot of times when people come talk about Floyd, they like to do that. They like to say all that. So I'm not, I'm not hearing it. I give Floyd his flowers. Does that mean that you admire Al Heyman? I respect Al Heyman. I wouldn't say I admire him, but I respect him. I respect him as a businessman. I, I, I don't admire him, but I respect him. BT, let's be honest here. Floyd got dropped once. He did. Um, his glove touched the canvas when he fought Zab Judah, for sure. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. But unfortunately for Floyd, Zab Judah is a four-round fighter. He's, he's one of the greatest four-round fighters of all time. You know, but he he's the black he's the black Jili Zhang. You know, great four round fighter, can punch, it's dangerous southpaw. But by the fifth, sixth, seventh round, what, what is Zab Judah doing almost every and all fights, blowing out of his ass? So no no different than Zhang, the black the black Jili Zhang, or maybe Zhang is the Chinese Zab Judah. You know, <laughs> even though he's not gonna be the undisputed champion ever like Zab Judah was, but you know you know what I mean. They had the same traits. All trolls aside, Zhao Ximing fought like many, but with no power. Zha, Zha, he did, but Zha, Zhao Ximing was, yeah, Zhao Ximing was, ugh, he was whatever. I remember Bob Arum. Bob Arum used to really, I got to say, man, um, I, I interviewed Bob Arum for the first time this week, um, which is crazy because, you know, you know I've I, I done a lot of interviews, so, like, I, I'm desensitized to, like, you know, when I interview people now, like, to me, it's not a big deal anymore, but... Bob, I, I got a chance to, to hear Bob Aaron bullshit live and in color when he said, uh, he said, Crawford is a great fighter, but in a way, is generational. And I'm like, well, what about Crawford? Crawford's not generational. I remember when you used to talk, you used to compare Crawford to Marvelous Marvin Hagler and, and these kind of things. And you were, you were, you were giving, you were big, you were big, you were really giving Terrence Crawford his flowers. But, uh. No, so I had I had to kind of check Bob a little bit on that, but it was it was good. It was good to talk to the Bob father. Um, cool guy, man. Speaking of Zab Judah, do you know his brother got knocked out by a Chinese light heavyweight named Meng Falong? Yes, I do. I do. Meng Feng Long is the is the is the fighter that lost to Jean Pascal. Thug, Thug, and Ball, Thug and Ball Hustle says, we still ain't got Shakira or Devin or Devin. No, we haven't. And that's what I'm saying. And these guys, like, I'm not saying they're not talented. Like, the Devins and Shakurs and Tanks and Tios and these guys, they're all very talented fighters. We're not talking about them because they're bums. They're all really good. They all did things in the amateurs and in their careers that we're talking about. But the way to, to, to the magnitude that they're praised is ridiculous. And I think because they're... Ego has been stroked so much, they uh they don't know how to properly take criticism. I mean, look look at Tio, right? Tio just put on a straight dud, trash ass performance against Jermaine Ortiz, one of the worst fights of the year. And now Tiafim Lopez is gonna fight Steve Claggett down there in South Florida. Now now Tio wanna now Tio wanna be from South Florida now. So it's like, come on, man, Shakur Stevenson. Is fighting, you know, a good, a good little fighter, Arthur Heratunian, but you're supposed to be the pound pound number one guy, and you find a dude that, that, that just that just lost to Frank Martin? I mean, come on. That's what we're doing now? These are the guys we're praising? Come on, man. Crazy quiet, quiet as kept. I mean, people want to shit on Javante Davis, and I know I've shit on Javante Davis plenty of times, but he's fighting Frank Martin. He, he's fighting the best guy. Frank Martin is better than Steve Cleggett. Frank Martin is better than 
Arta Heratunian. He beat Arta Heratunian. So therefore, are people, are the people that give Javante Davis shit, are they going to give him a little bit of credit here for finally stepping up and fighting a, a, a an explosive, you know, top five uh, black 135 pounder? Because they, they say he don't fight black people. They say, they say oh, he, all he does is fight flat-footed smaller Mexicans. So oh, all these other 35 pounders or 40 pounders, whatever you want to call them, they're not fighting nobody. I mean, personally, I think Frank Mars is better than Ryan too. Ryan, 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 Ryan's got to show us something because Ryan ain't really showed us a whole lot. It's been a, it's been a lot of hype. It's been a lot of hooting and hollering. But he ain't really done much in that ring to, to, to validate none of that hype. So I would actually say out of Devin, out of T.O., out of Shakur and Tank and all them, the guy that's fighting the best dude is actually Javante Davis. So why don't you give Javante Davis a little credit? But nah, people don't want to do that because a lot of people here on YouTube that like to, you know, cheerlead and 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 kiss the behinds of of the Devons and Jacors and Tia's or whoever they fanboy for, that will go against their narrative. But thankfully, and, and, and this this is why this is why true school sports is the home of boxing because guess what? There's nobody sticking a key in my back telling me what I can and can't say. True school and BT says whatever he wants to say. Nobody, nobody controls what I say. Never. Yeah, Tank Davis and Frank Mwan's an awesome fight. It's one of the most exciting matchups that could have been made in the lightweight division from a stylistic standpoint. Two explosive southpaw power punchers. I agree. Fighting a fighter that just lost is crazy, and I'm a short court fan. That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm not trying to doubt Arthur Heratuni. I like him. I think he's a good fighter. I think, you know, um, he's, a, he's a formidable opponent for, for, for a lot of guys in the division. But for a guy like Shakur Stevenson, a fighter that gets praised like he's the messiah of boxing, that he's the pound pound number one, come on, man. Like, stop it, man. Just stop. Stop. Like, stop, stop it. You can't sit here and say, oh, you're this and you're that. You're fighting our terror too. The guy that just lost to Frank Martin. Come on. T, if you want to find Steve Claggett. Like, come on, man. BT, uh, what are your thoughts if Laura fights Danny Garcia this year? Who you got if having on pay-per-view? Um, I don't have any thoughts on it, to be honest with you. I hope it never happens. It's a horrible fight. Shout out to everybody here. We're, 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 we're like an hour and 40 minutes in, so I'm going to make it a solid two hours. When I, when I get to the 120-minute mark, I'm at 102 minutes right now, so when I get to a solid two hours, I'll end the live because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Easter Sunday. I ain't, I ain't really doing much except resting and recovering from what was a crazy weekend for me. Um, there's nothing better I could be doing here than talking with you guys on Easter Sunday, and, you know, Jesus Christ is king, man, so he gave me this talent to talk about boxing at the, at the highest level. And I'm gonna honor him by going two hours today. How about that? Let's do, let, let's do that. Um, congrats to Melvin Jerusalem, the newly crowned WBC minimum weight champion of the world after hard fought victory in Japan. Philippines has a new world champion, and the and, and he breaks a, a bad run of form for Philip for, for uh, Filipino boxing. You know, Mike Planilla got beat up by uh, Angelo Leo. A lot of people got beat up, so you know um. He ended the you know, he beat he beat a, and he beat a very good fighter a guy that I, I like a lot and you die Shigoka, and um he's a two time he's a two, I, I have to watch the fight so I can talk more about it but um he's a two time champion shout out to Melvin Jerusalem he's back uh yeah Shakur looking Shakur's looking bogus just like T.O. fighting Steve Claggett that's, that's what I'm saying Steve Claggett like come on man Steve freaking Claggett you got me you got me messed up. I miss Gary Russell Jr. We haven't seen him since his amazing one-handed performance. I haven't seen or heard from him since I interviewed him in December. He was talking about he had all these plans, and we still haven't. Um, we still haven't seen it. Harold says, "Then why don't we get the real BT? Because YouTube's not ready for the real BT, Harold. You, YouTube only gets about like thirty or forty percent of the real BT. I gotta, I gotta censor myself because I'll get the. If you get the real BT, and every now and then the real BT does pop up when." When people here get disrespectful to a certain degree and they piss me off enough on the right day or with the right topic or the right, you may get it, you know. But um, you know, I, I try to be kind to everybody. I, I I am being the real BT, but when Harold says the real BT, he means like, why don't we get the guy that's like, you know, gonna start cursing at everybody and stuff? But you know, I I can't be out here cursing at everybody, man. I'm 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 about to be thirty next year. I can't be um just lashing out people. That's not good. 
But when the time comes, let it, make it happen. Melvin beat two Japanese fighters in Japan to win his titles, and, and, that, and that shows that he's a true champion. So shout out to Melvin Jerusalem. Um, I don't know if you spoke on it, but should have should we have a newfound respect for Rolly in the loss to Pitbull? Um, I I have always respected Rolly. I respect Rolly more than Terence Crawford, honestly, um, because at least Rolly isn't out here big timing guys. He's supposed to be fighting. Um, Rolly fought Javon. He fought Javante Davis. He's fought Pitbull Cruz. He's fought Barroso. He fought Jackson Marinez. He's fought Anthony Yigit. He's fought um. You know, he's got a good resume. I mean, maybe not in terms of the guys he's beating because he's lost to all the elites, but the guy he's been fighting. He's he's been fighting. And and we asked Terrence Crawford to fight Jerron. And as we asked we asked him to fight one guy who's uh equally as athletic as him and, and, and big and young and strong and the best welterweight in this in the division. And we're asking for too much. I mean, come on. I I, I respect Roley more than Terrence Crawford. Yeah, Roley's not at anywhere close to as good as a, a talent as Terrence Crawford, and he, and he never will be. We know that. He's not going to accomplish anywhere close to what Terrence Crawford has accomplished. We all know that. But right now, at this moment in time, I got more respect for him. Because at least he's making fights happen. He's not sitting here saying, nah, nah, I can't fight him. You know? Like Terrence did the boots. And yes, I know. I know. Well, before anybody comes with their counterpoints about boots and BLK Prime, I made videos about all that. I've, 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 I've said what I got to say, but... About Boots' team and them not handling it right. But, but, but uh, my, my gripe is with Crawford because Crawford gets praised to no end for having this Kobe Bryant competitive mentality, but it never shines through when Jerron, it, 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 it conveniently never shines through in any interview when it comes to Jerron Ennis. So it is what it is. Shakur Marriott, sh sh uh, good to see you, champ. By the way, Shakur, I haven't talked to you in a while, so. I'm going to end the live in like 15 minutes. If you're going to be awake, I know it's probably late in the UK. So if you're going to be awake, um, I'd like to talk to you. Maybe you and Hyrule will get a call. So let me know in the chat. But uh, he says, yo, BT, have you been watching? Uh, how, how you been? I've been watching your Rocky Marciano video again. Legendary video. Yeah, man. Go go check that out. Go check out my uh, go check out my, my, my old Rocky Marciano video. I got to... That's really the content I want to start making more of, guys. I feel like I, I get so caught up in all this boxing, all these boxing news videos that it takes away from the kind of videos that I really want to be making, which are like those types of videos, like the boxing history videos about like the old fighters and yesteryear. Those are things I want to really do more of because I feel like the boxing world will benefit from me focusing more of my efforts on that. Um, so let, let me know in the comments, guys. Do you guys want to see me start making more videos about boxing history? And um, yeah, let me know in the comments about that. But yeah, Shakur, I've been good, man. I, I'm back. I'm back here in Vegas. I've been. I've been here, there, and everywhere. I've been to uh, the last. In the, just in the last thirty days, I've been to L.A., Vegas, upstate New York, Phoenix, Arizona, South Florida, and now I'm back in Vegas. So yeah. Um. BT, thanks for the live, bro. Keep it up. I'm gonna head out now, bro. But have a good one. Can't wait for Neri versus Inouye. Thank you, JK, and uh, thank you for being here and just, you know, talking with me, man. I appreciate, appreciate you. Now, you're right. Roley's personality sells fight. That's what I'm saying, man. People want to always down Roley and like, man, man you, you know how boring would be. Could, could, you, could you guys imagine how boring boxing would be if we could have guys with Terrence Crawford's personality and Earl Spencer's personality? Boxing would be horrible. BT, did you end up sleeping on somebody's bed? What do you mean by that? He said, yes, please make more videos of boxing history. I will, for sure, man. That, 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 that's what we need, man. There's like sometimes boxing now is such BS at times that I feel like it'd be more beneficial for people if I made more videos about boxing history. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... Really, that's one of my things. You know, the first uh, the first quarter of the year was very good. It was very fruitful here on True School Sports. But I, I'm always hard on myself. I'm very, very hard on myself. I'm my biggest critic. I always want to make things better on the channel, not just for me, but um, but for the boxing fans. So um, I went to uh, I want I, I'm, I'm gonna do that. that. That's my my promise for you guys. This the second quarter of the year, from April to June. Expect more box history videos. Um, I saw that you went to the club. Yeah, I went to the club, man. No, I didn't. I didn't do anything, man. I, I, I didn't do anything. 
BT, do you, do you respect fighters with dozens of big number losses who don't get talked about but will fight anybody? Them other guys are honest respect. That's why I, I asked you this question. Of course, I've got, I've got a lot more respect for a guy like Glenn Johnson than I do like Terrence Crawford, honestly. Guy that fought everyone. I got more respect for Oscar De La Hoya than I do for you know, fighters with, with one loss, two losses that, that, that avoided competition, you know? I got more respect for a fighter like, you know, Eric Morales, who's got, you know, four or five losses than Canelo Alvarez because he didn't duck and avoid certain fights, you know? So that's where I'm at. Red says, if you ever end up making long form content in the future and you need an editor, I'm willing to help out, bro. All right, well, the best thing you can do, Red, is get in touch with me on social media, either on Instagram at Justin Kid from Dania or Twitter at True School Sports, or you can email me, and all that information can be found in the about section of um, of my of, of the of the channel. So if you go on the channel, go to about all my social media should pop up, but those are my my social media no, platforms to get in touch with me. So do that, and uh, yeah, um, when I, if I get started on that boxing history content, that's gonna be long form content. That's gonna be like I'm talking. 20 30 minute content because um I think I think that's what's really missing in boxing. I mean, there's some great history channels like Rich the Fight Historian I know does great content, but I really do feel like that's where I could be um more beneficial to boxing than even just these videos. I'm sure you also have more respect for Manny Pacquiao than I do. I have more respect for Manny Pacquiao than Crawford. Like this this draw and his stuff really like and mind you, Terrence Crawford is one of my fair fighters of history. I can't emphasize that enough, but it's really diminished my respect for him, like in a major way. Arturo Gotti is a big loss, um, respected fighter. But yeah, but Arturo Gotti, everybody, everybody only remembers him for like the Gotti fights and Ivan Robinson, but he beat legitimate champions at what 130, you know. He was a great fighter before those fights. Durant or Crawford at 140, who you got? That's a oof. That's a tough one. Terrence Crawford at 40 was a great fighter. Um, but Roberto Duran is an all-time great fighter. They're both great fighters. Um I might catch flack. I'm gonna go I, I, I'm gonna go with uh I'm actually gonna go with uh I, I like Crawford, man. But that's that's just me. I like Crawford. I I, I like 140 Crawford, so maybe I'm, little, maybe I'm being a little biased, but I just think Crawford at 140 was damn near unbeatable. Uh, nobody's unbeatable, but he was like very, very close. That was that was Pete Crawford. That was like um, best, the best balance, the best counter punching. I mean, that was that was the Crawford I really liked. Since it's Easter, I would say Jesus' best blessing was showing that you don't need money or power to live live like Jesus. Obviously, we can't perform blessings, but but we can speak the words. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, you know, it's not about the money, man. Money, money. Money and power won't satisfy you. You know, all, all the things that we think in this world will satisfy us alone, they don't. Like women and money and all the things that people chase after in the world, they, 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 those things alone don't satisfy you. But, but like you, you, you could have $5 in your pocket, but if you got Jesus, you got everything. And um, you could have $500 million, but, but, but if you don't got Jesus, you are broke MF. So, you know, get right with him. Definitely repent and, and come to him, man, because he's, he's always waiting for everybody. Nobody, it's never too late to change. It's never too late to, you know, follow God, follow the Lord, you know? So, yeah. Mark Two Sharp Johnson versus Romo Gonzalez. Oh, my God. What a fight. That's a great fight right there, man. That's like two of my, that, that's like two of my favorite fighters. Because I, I, I really have grown to like Mark Two Sharp Johnson in the last year of me watching him on YouTube and stuff. Um... Fuck, it's hard. It's so hard, bro. Why, why, why do I gotta pick? What weight? I, I I would say I would lean slightly towards Roman Gonzalez, but I mean real slightly because Mark Two John Johnson was he could fight. He had everything, but Roman Gonzalez had the style, the defense, the the pressure punching. The he had everything in his prime at his best. Roman Gonzalez had anything for anybody ever. How would you pit Bud against Aaron Pryor at 140? Now, that's why I think Bud Crawford, I, that, that might be a, hard, a, a tough matchup for him. I think, um, I think, um, man, I think because Crawford always slugs, that might play into what Pryor likes to do. 
And Pryor had really good hand speed when he put his, put his punches together. So I don't know, man. Bud might lose that one, but we'll never know. They're both great fighters. It's tough. At, if money don't buy happiness, why are we always happy when we got money? I always laugh at that. Well, because look, when people, I'm going to unpack that for you, right? Now, I agree with you because I've been, I've been a broke MF a lot, a lot of times in my life. I've, I've gone through some real hard times, but I don't complain about them because I'm a man. And, 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 and if you're really a man, you pull yourself up out of the bad circumstances and you find a way to make your life the best way it can be. But I think, you know, you need enough money to meet the basic necessities of life. So food, clothing, shelter, recreational activities like that you enjoy. Um, enough money to bless people in your family and friends to help out when they need it, like stuff like that. But that statement, I think what it means is like when, when you reach a certain amount of money, when you reach a certain amount of, of income and you're well off, like, okay, I'll use Canelo Alvarez as, as an example. Canelo Alvarez has hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Do you think another hundred million millions of dollars is going to make him any happier than he already is? What could, what could somebody buy with a hundred more million dollars that they couldn't buy with the first hundred million dollars? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, unless he's going to try to buy a sports team. Like, does he want to buy a sports team? Does he want to buy the? Does he want to buy the the uh, the Los Angeles Lakers or something like that? Like, unless you're trying to buy a sports team, you know, there's not a lot of um. There's not a lot that like once you get your basic necessities met and you have enough money to do the things that really. Uh, spark your interest and you're you're good like you're like you're blessed like that like for me for me I don't need a whole lot as long as I got enough money to go to the beach when I'm in Florida and go to the, and and to go watch and, and to go watch the Florida Panthers play live and in color and on a consistent basis I'm good and I got my food I got my my money in order I'm good like I don't need a whole lot like you know I can take care of my family my my loved ones that's all I need you know 100 million is gonna make somebody who's never had I got you I got you Iroh. Shakur says, I've been watching a lot of Bro Duran videos. What he achieved is unmatched. He's a top five pound for pound fighter easily. Not, it's not even close. And Hiram wants to know, or Kevin Effect wants to know, Roman Gonzalez versus Inouye at 115, the fight that we should have but never got. Um, I, I've been adamant about this. They didn't fight because Inouye knew what was up. He knew what was up. We saw we saw what Donaire was, uh, what kind of problems Donaire was giving him. I feel like Roman Gonzalez's uh, defense, his pressure punching style, he would have had Inouye on, uh, on, on some serious... He, he would have had him really, like, working in there. He he would have made Inouye fight every second of every round. And, like, Inouye fought Marlon Tapalis, right? Marlon Tapalis, good fighter, two-division champion. Marlon Tapalis don't have anywhere close to the, to the work rate of Roman Gonzalez. And even though Inouye won and won the fight handily, Inouye had to work really, really hard. And you could even see the exhaustion on his face. Um, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel... That if they were to fight, Roman Gonzalez would have came out victorious. And that's why when Inouye was at 108 and Roman Gonzalez was at 112, he voluntarily skipped 112 to go to 115 and fight Omar Narvaez. And I, I, I will die on that hill to for the rest of my life. I don't care any Inouye fan what I got to say about it. I was there. I covered it. I remember everything about, about it when it was happening. You know? Garcia boxing versus the wall. Shout out to you with the, with the 1999... Super chat, man. I'm not really sure who Garcia boxing is. It can't be which Garcia is. Is it Sam Garcia, Mike Garcia, Robert Garcia, Danny Garcia? Which Garcia is it? Is this a Garcia I know or is this somebody that's a fan of the channel? Who who are you? State who you are so I could I could thank you properly. Um The beach is free. What are you spending it on? Hiro, see, that's how I know you, you, you never been to no real beaches, because in South Florida, we got beaches you gotta pay for to go to, like on Key Biscayne. The admission ain't a lot, but you know, um, we got we got some nice beaches, Hyro, and some of them you gotta pay for. We got state parks, so that's how, that's how I know you ain't been to no real beach. <laughs> but but Shakur, Shakur, answer my question, man. Answer my question. Do you do you want to get on the video call after this live is done? Because I'm gonna I want I want to get on one soon with you. I want to talk to you. Um, but yeah, like 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 yeah, like like I said. Once you have enough money to meet your, your basic necessities and take care of people you love and care for and can, you know, maneuver and do your hobbies and, and, and think, you got it made, man. Like, you don't need, like, tons and tons and tons of money. Now, I'm not, I'm not but I'm not advocating being poor. Don't think, don't, don't think I'm av out here advocating being poor. Get your money. Oh, Sam Garcia. My guy, Sam Garcia. The guys, make sure you show your appreciation to Sam Garcia. He is the... 
he's one of the trainers for uh, Ruben, Ruben Villa. I was just talking about Ruben Villa earlier, you know, because they, they mentioned Ruben Villa. Uh, somebody, somebody had mentioned in the chat that they'd want to see Ruben Villa take on Angelo Leo. And I said, that's a great fight for boxing. I love that fight. If, if, if Ruben Villa can't get a title fight, Angelo can't get, a, can't get a title fight, they're two of the top contenders in the division. Why not? You know, that's a hell of a fight. And by the way, Sam, yes, we will go to the uh, the Giants game when I'm in Cali at some point. Because I, I do want to go to Oracle Park. BT, I'm out. But good super chat. And I'll see you next time. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Do not live above your means and, and you're always content. No simping for chicks. Pam Roop, thank you. See, that's what I needed to hear, man. Because God's been blessing me. And sometimes you get that temptation to do some stupid, something stupid. So... Thank you, but thank you for the the the, the gentle reminder. <laughs> no sympathy for chicks, you know. Just just focus on what focus on the work that God has before you. Which which for some of you guys, you guys may may work in an office. Some of you guys may just do blue collar work. Some of you guys may that do no. I have my for me, it's just content creation. So that's that's why I'm focused on what, what, what I gotta do. Um, Hyro says, so you can't love a woman. No, that, that's not what I'm saying. You can love a woman, but you can't love her to the point where you don't do what you got to do and, and handle what you got to handle as a man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is funny, man. But look, guys, it's been a pleasure. We went two hours here on, on the live. I appreciate everybody who's made this like actually this has actually been one of the best lives of the entire month so thank you guys for making this one of the best lives in the entire month it was a great time um happy easter to everybody you know jesus christ is king so make sure uh you go ahead and you know you uh not 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 just today don't don't just make it for easter but like every day try to get as close to the lord as possible and realize that like none of us are perfect like we're all going to do things that are not godly at times but don't condemn yourself like if you if you make a mistake in life don't condemn yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Just move on and um, be the best you can be um, for your family, for your friends, and, and for yourself. So I'm going to leave it at that. You guys take care. Um, God bless. Happy Easter. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.